Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of the Long Coat Mafia Podcast. It is I, the Reverend Godfather, bringing you something special again today. And it is a recorded Skype hostful. And it's not one of your usual planned hostfuls where we have topics and discuss things. This is one of the, going to be one of those things that it's just a potpourri type of things because Big Candy contacted me and said, I need to vent and let's talk about a couple of things. And... Things just went around. Uh, some of it's pretty good. Some of it's pretty, probably pretty bad. Well, we want to hear from you in reference to what. And as always, that being said, our email is always longcoatmafia at gmail.com. So I'm going to leave that there and get right into this week's episode, which is, again, uh, a s- Skyped-in hostful for various reasons. So I'm going to step back and let the show begin. Alright folks, we're back again. Uh, welcome to a brand new up ep- again, welcome to a brand new episode, and it's with Skype with Big Candy. Hello. Yeah, <laughs> so, you kind of messaged me on today, well, this wonderful, glorious midweek, whatever you want to <laughs> call it. Yeah. Uh, with topics to talk about and things to rant about. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, okay. Well, let's get into, uh, ah, so touching on, we were just talking before the, before we went live about, do you want to get into that? Go ahead. The white, the white knighting. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I'll let you tell that story in a minute, but what, what spawned me, well, I had, I had to talk. I had to talk. I didn't want to go online and you know, get into an argument on Facebook with anybody or anything. Because I actually like the people that were posting it. I just can't believe that it's gotten this bad. So, you're familiar with vinyl records and how they come in various colors, right? Right. Okay. So, I think there's a... a uh, I might have posted up that uh, retro episode, maybe... Uh, a year, a little more than two years ago, right? Early last year, late 2016. Right. Yeah, so, folks, I mean, check our ar- archive at the Long Coat Mafia Podcast dot Podbean dot com if it's still working. Uh, <laughs> uh, so there's there's special editions or just you know alternate editions that usually will come out on a on a different color vinyl than than black. So <laughs> the person that was posting this up is from uh, formerly uh, Robotic Empire Records, and it's now, I forget the name of it now, they just changed the name again, uh, because I guess they outgrew the name or something. Anyway. And it's just more of this PC culture crap that I, it's, it's really taking over everything, and it's really starting to make things awkward and bad. <laughs> They have a problem with calling the vinyl colored. Now, we're not talking about people. (laughs) We're talking about plastic. (laughs) We're talking about records. What, the records are getting insulted now that, uh... I (laughs) guess... He said, I've always had a problem when when people said colored vinyl. And I'm just like, did you really? Did you really always have a problem with that? Or was it just recently because you guys are digging real deep? Because to me, does it sound as ridiculous to you as it does to me? Oh, yeah. It, I mean, it's it's one of those things. It's like, fucking why? You know, it, it's, yeah. it's a piece of goddamn plastic, you know. And if you're getting insulted over a piece of goddamn plastic, whether it's uh, – because records, I've seen some of the records you've gotten recently to resell that yeah. they're like uh, filled with fake blood, or, yeah, or yeah. they look like their blood. They're well done, or they look like their blood splattered, and yeah. so forth and so on. And it's something to get in, uh, excited about. And you know, and either you're a vinyl collector or not, you know, it's something like. Yeah, this can be awesome. This could be, you know, whether it's, you know, something that is, uh, uh, like you could have, you know, for the folks out there, uh, the band Lordy, the, uh, you know, right. 
could have uh, a picture of their lead singer on a they want if they want to do a promotional vinyl vinyl album he could come out and it's like now you could play with my face you know it's a vinyl record <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, you know it's something that they could have fun with and it, it's lighthearted and cool but to have some you know somebody they get, gotta take, they got to take everything and make it awkward right and it's, it's like wh- why I don't understand. Like, and the worst thing is, like, so I'm, I'm reading down the comments. Mistake number one. Reading <laughs> down the comments, and they, either they, uh, they're going to depress the fuck out of you or make you pissed, one okay. or the other. Little column A, little column B. Because, <laughs> like, so somebody said, "Well, what about colored pencils? Is that the same?" And the guy was like, he he referenced him to a Wikipedia article, which was like basically Wikipedia. The definition on Wikipedia was saying colored as in uh, someone other than white. Okay, I guess that's one version on Wikipedia. There's probably another one. But then he didn't reference like the Oxford English Dictionary, which the first thing it says is like something other than black, white, or, you know, clear. Right. <laughs> having having color, you know. Um but the the it, it's like they're reaching, they're reaching for reasons to be mad. And the thing is that if he referenced a Wikipedia page, something that ha- that can be openly edited at any fucking time, it's stupid. Right. And yeah. especially when you hear people, not just people, I've heard it more so with like, uh, um, uh. Chris Hardwick. It's like every time he 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 could say something stupid that like like I like plaid paper, and right. somebody within twenty four hours of uh, dropping of the show is going to add, and he likes plaid paper on his Wikipedia page, <laughs> and he could be making a joke of it, and I'm I'm sure it's not going to happen with this show. It's like oh uh, the Reverend is going to said that Chris Hardwick likes plaid paper, so let's put it on his. You know, Fuck, you know, it, it's not, <laughs> Wikipedia is not 100% accurate. It's probably at most times 60% accurate. Right. So. Um, so okay, I'll, I'm, I'm bringing up the actual post. I'm going to read from the actual post just so you can get the context of what, what I read and how my brain slipped out of my ear onto my desk and ran away. You mean more so than listening to a Coast to Coast podcast? Yeah, it's about the same same. That's how, bad, that's how bad this shit's getting. Wow. So, okay. For some reason, I always thought colored was a relic word on the no-no list in terms of modern society. This is how it starts. <laughs> Probably wow. because of, you know, the Jim Crow era. Anyone? <laughs> it seems to right here, let me let me it seems to have risen as a perfectly acceptable term in the vinyl record market ever since the vinyl collective era several years ago. Before that, the labels that were on or were around then just listed as color vinyl. That's not true. Uh what other areas of commerce and society still use colored in their day to day? Perhaps we should drop this shit. Uh, uh, I feel my intelligence going fast. I need it back. Hold on a second. I need to watch some Tequila Tequila on YouTube just so I can get my IQ back. Right. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. Right. Right. So, uh, like, I'm sitting there. I, I don't know what to do. I start pacing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I can't. What? Really? <laughs> like, colored paper. Colored pencils. You know, there's lots of different uses for colored. And it doesn't have anything to do, anything at all, with a person of color. Right. Even there are probably out there some cases where someone who might be a person of color right. would rather be preferred as a person of color or a colored person right. than uh, it meaning... Uh, instead of being referred to as uh, black, brown, or what have you, uh, right. either African-American, uh, Mexican, Indian, or a person of color. 
right. to be, he, you know, safe. Yeah. Meaning, since uh, uh, I, I, it's going to come out wrong. It, it definitely is going to come out wrong, and I do apologize. I just, meaning, I just started if you using the term black. Meaning, it, where, where I'm, I'm coming from is that if yeah. someone like from India, yeah. uh, Mexico, and maybe Ar- Iranian or someone from the Middle East right. all have the same similar skin tone, and you're not yeah. sure, a person no, of color. True that's true, too. Um, because because sometimes you can't tell with people from the, the Middle East exactly, and a lot of people from Asia, like Indian and, and you know different places over there, you can't tell the difference. Um, or the, well, the difference mean, probably, is so minute, it's kind of hard to tell. Regionally, you probably can if you're from there. But right. To us, we, I, you know, personally, I have no idea. Um, but I, I never liked the term African American <laughs> because they're not from Africa. Their grandparents, great great grandparents, probably are, but they're not. I always say black, just because they like they always say white. They don't say Caucasian or European American to me. Right. So, but anyway. The only way that this would be an unacceptable term is if it was, say, like soul records or hip hop records containing black artists, and you were saying that they were colored vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, and only then would you be slightly out of out of date. <laughs> right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, it's like, well, see, that's, uh, yeah, I could see your point. Is that like, oh, that's you know, a old James Brown record. It's on color. It's colored vinyl. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, I can understand and well, see your me, point. That, that meaning that the participants are are of are, are of color, right? And you would say it's colored vinyl, as in it belongs to people of color, right? Then, then your then your terms would be out of date, right? But if you're referring to the hue in which the the vinyl has been shaded, or you know pressed, uh, no. <laughs> Right, There's, like getting a uh, even, a Blue Misfits even, album or something like that. Yeah, right. It's not even in the same ballpark. It's like, for this person to say, well, it's always bothered me. You've got to be crazy. And, and If it's got, always it's also, bothered you, it's like, now you're sounding like, uh, I'm referring to this person, it's like, now you're sounding like the fucking SJW Marvel people. Like, oh, yeah. it's, it, it's stupid, it's idiotic, and it's like, listen, it... It's how are you getting insulted by this, you know, and why? Like and they follow up on here. Uh, I saw it used a few times via newer labels around the initial boom. I figured someone would mention it to those folks and that it would get righted and not happen again. But now it's pretty common to get uh, comments and such as say pre order colored. It's a little jarring, they say. <laughs> Is it really? Is it jarring? The worst is I need that on colored wax. We haven't manufactured records on wax since before you were allowed to say colored in society, sir. Ha ha. So not only are they stupid, (laughs) but (laughs) people say wax because it's it's an old term for, for records. They were made on wax back in the day. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it's the same as saying you want a record or as people say, some people used to say platter. Uh, some people used to say, um, oh gosh, uh, the licorice pizza. I don't know. They used to say all kinds of stuff in, in terms of records. But if it really bothers you that someone says colored wax, you've got problems and you're, you're you have mental problems <laughs> <laughs> and you probably need to be taking something. And it really just – it threw me off kilter because it, it's just one more thing that people are bitching and moaning about it, as if they're digging deep, digging really deep to try and find problems. Just like the guy on um, the the the, the uh, page the other day, white knighting for uh, naked women everywhere. Yeah, basically, folks, what we were talking about is that a, a few weeks ago uh, on – uh, he's a fr- I'll, I want to consider him a friend of the show. Uh, oh, well. it, uh, John Johnson, I forgot what the initial post was. It was early January, early to mid-January. Uh, he Really harmless post, I it think. Was a really, yeah, really harmless post. Uh, uh, again, since it's February, it's not only um, 
Black History Month. It's also apparently Women in Horror Month. Um, I'm going to say this right now. Both aspects of the month are... um, both groups of people have come a very long way in, especially in the short amount of time. Even though 50 years, uh, 50 plus years, it doesn't seem like that um, a short time, but in the overall human history, it is. Um, but for this sake, uh, we're talking about women. Uh, he made a few com- uh, harmless comments about women in history, or in regards to this, um, uh, his films. And someone came up uh, white knighting uh, in regards to his use, John Johnson's use of uh, naked women in his films. And for those, first off, let me define what white, for those of you who might not be familiar with the term white knighting in uh, the social justice circles. Uh, it is kind of what it's supposed to sound like, meaning that instead of being evil, you're standing up for somebody. Um, but in most time, most instances, it's when it comes to guys defending women, it's a way of trying to get into somebody's panties. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's like, oh, I'm going to stand up for this woman. Whether she, I'm going to prove that uh, I like her. And if I do this, uh, she might actually have, uh, give me a hug or a kiss or fuck me. Yeah. In a, reality, it's not going to happen. It's another term for virtue signaling. Right. Look at me. I'm a good guy. Right. And pretty much that's what he was doing. He was uh, virtual signaling, white knighting. Uh, how dare he? You know, how dare you? And this, that, and the other thing. And uh, the person that was who works with John Johnson in reference well, we to helping. Wrong people to talk to. Yeah, mm-hmm. wrong people to talk to. And like. We, you know, if they're uncomfortable with this and we really want them, uh, oh, basically what John Johnson posted up is like uh, he had to choose between either uh, getting the rights for a song or uh, uh, it was like the company that owned the rights said either you get, um, if you want the rights to our song, you have to clip this nudity out of the film. And it was one of those, he said, uh, roughly, I'm paraphrasing, is one of those instances where I wanted both, but if I could get one, if I can get both, that's awesome. But if I have to clip one, use one instead of the other, it's no hard feelings. Um, so he was like, how dare, this person was like, how dare you, you know, uh, objectify, it's like, I don't objectify anybody, you know, if they don't want to do this, they don't have to, uh, they're, they're doing it for their own free will. And pretty much he was, you know, knocking every argument out of the park in regards to why he does it, how he does it, and, you know, in regards to being respectful and this, that, and other things. I mean, John Johnson was hitting every nail on the head in regards to how he's not objectifying any, anybody, and his uh, person that helps him cast is also was also helping him out. And what happened was, because we are in the, we at the show last year um, interviewed Mel Heflin, and I'm probably mispronouncing her last name, and I no, do apologize. Right. But uh, I I came in and said, "Listen, dude, you're done. You, you shut up. They're hitting it out. They're counter countering every single one of your arguments without insulting, pretty much without insulting you. Lay down. Shut up. Yeah, you're losing this argument." So far, two to one. Shut the fuck up. By the way, if you want any sources to what they're talking about, here's a, a recording with Mel Heflin that I did from our, our podcast. You know, and I t- uh, mentioned I might have mentioned this show. I said here's here's the link to the show, full link, not a short link. Listen to it to what she has to say herself. Right. In regards to this, because that's one of the things I wanted, you know, I had, was trying to be an asshole to get her to say, I'm doing this out of my own free will. And and I ta- and after that, I tagged her, I said, oh, by the way, Mel Heflin was a wonderful, uh, is, uh, wonderful interview, and she's just this wonderful person as well. Meaning, I wasn't white knighting her in any way, shape, or form. No. Just that, you know, I was giving her credit, you know, making, telling everybody that, hey, she's a wonderful person. She's a great person. Yeah. 
You really gonna shoot you know, you know, um, and after that, I was in like uh, not even ten minutes. I think uh, John Johnson's friend liked it, and he was he commented after that. It's like, why haven't I worked with Mel? You know, just you know that fun aspect. Like, I should have worked with Mel. Why? I, you know, I've been in this business long enough. I want to work with. Him. And after that, Monique Dupree whom I want to probably have an interview with because yeah. she's done so much. She's been in Troma. She's been in John Johnson's films. She's done, uh, uh, I don't want to say Divas Wrestling, but she's done woman, uh, res, uh, wrestled uh, in uh, wrestling on, under her own right. So we're not talking as uh, somebody who's this kind of uh, wimpy woman so, sort of thing, or, but she's very empowered, very strong, uh, mm-hmm. I can't say enough good things about Monique from what I've seen. She's a very right. independent woman. She's a mother, uh, even though she's going through her own tough time medically. Uh, yeah. But, you know, if she's – I can't say enough – even though I don't know her personally, I can't say enough good things about her and what she has done. Um, I, I just want to add real quick, anybody who knows anything about B-movie horror – that genre that these women are in, Jenny Janetti, Mel Heflin, Monique Dupree, all, all the girls that, you know, are in the, a lot of the B-movie horrors that are regionally around here, um, the ones that we know from shows and things, uh, even with trauma, it goes hand in hand. The, like, the nudity and stuff, it's one of the tropes of those movies. They know this going into it. Right. They're aware of what they're getting into when they get into it. They're not being abused. It's all in good fun. Right, and that's what uh, even Monique was saying. It's like uh, I do this under my own free will. Yeah. If I don't, if I, you know, if I feel awkward, I ain't going to do it. And he, this person, passed the comments like, "Well, would you do the, uh, uh, this, that, and other thing?" And she pretty much came up and said. Listen, if I went for a job at McDonald's and they told me to take off my clothes, I'm out of there. Right. And he came was like, well, what if the, uh, this person said this? I, and I chimed in. Listen, if that person said that, any smart, self-respecting woman will get up and leave. Exactly. Again, three immediately within five minutes, three likes. Pretty much all of them went out of the three, oh. two of which were women. And so she pretty much made the best argument. She's like, are you telling me I'm too stupid to know what to do with my own body? And not to mention the, uh, the other best one was, uh, so I think she said something along the lines like, wait a minute, you're not agreeing with me or listening to me because I'm not agreeing with you? Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, if she was right there next to this guy, she probably would have decked him. Yeah. I swear to God, really and I would have got I would have gotten her back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would have gotten her back. Like, well, he's took the first swing. <laughs> if she she did it out of south south uh, self defense. <laughs> and, and, um, <laughs> I, know, I wonder who these people are that are just coming out of the woodwork now, just to you know they don't, people don't need it and they're going to do it anyway. Yeah, and, it's like I, we don't want you helping us. Go away. Nobody wants your help. Nobody wants your, you know, crap. Just go go on. <laughs> uh, kind of, not that the, this topic is getting kind of cringy, but to kind of move on a little bit. Uh, I was reading recently that uh, I foresee, uh, even though it's going to be a good, probably a good movie, and I will probably go watch it when it comes out on the 16th, and that's Black Panther. And I don't know if you heard this. But I foresee problems because what I've been hearing is that right now that there is a, at least if not one, several groups on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit right now. Uh, I think at least Facebook is confirmed that what they are planning to do is once this movie comes out, Black Panther, is to go onto uh, like Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic and say it's how much, even though they haven't seen it, say how much it quote-unquote sucks to get revenge on the Marvel movies in regards to DC. 
Oh my god. And you're doing it. My initial response was like, oh, if you want to do this, why are you doing it to fucking Black Panther? Right. Oh, why? Well, what? Of all fucking movies. Of all fucking movies. Black Panther. A movie that's do, coming out in the... One, don't do it at all because it's just yeah. stupid and petty. Two, don't do it for Black Panther in regards to a... Um, in essence, an African superhero, right. even though Lakwanda is a, a fake African country, but still, um, he's a, if not an African superhero, a, a black superhero, um, if you want to use that terminology, that is can be inspiring to uh, colored people everywhere. Right. <laughs> um, they colored people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... You know, it here it is coming out in the middle, pretty much the middle of Af- Black History Month. Right. You're pulling this shit? Yeah. My God, what a way, you know, as much as I hate people calling other people Nazis and racists and everything else, I'm like, what, uh, I can understand your hate in regards to how, even though DC movies have fucked themselves over in recent years, Wonder Woman excluded in recent years in regards to how they are portraying their movies in regards to, oh, let's keep things realistic and, you know, therefore, you know, let's have the constant brooding and this, that, and the other thing. What a way and what a time yeah. to to say this. And you're going to be calling, you're going to have a large amount of people in in the black community calling you white supremacist oh, yeah. even though you're not right. just because you want to pull a DC versus Marvel bullshit and yeah, it could be the movies. best of all <laughs> movies of all fucking movies and to tie that in with the Wasp uh, news I, that came out recently yeah. the Ant-Man and Wasp which looks like it's going to be just as fucking hilarious as the first one Right. People are picking on Wasp's outfits and kind of declaring how that they want to change her outfit. Oh God! Because it, this, I, I don't know how you want to uh, peg this, but what people have pointed out is that the Wasp out, they highlighted her costume, the uh, her the front of her costume. Right. They said. We're highlighting the problem area, which is what would be the yellow part of her costume. They said, well, look at this area, now flip the image. Doesn't it look look, look like a penis and balls photo? I guess if you're gross and disgusting. <laughs> and they want, it's like, uh, they, they want all her scenes refilmed because it looks like a penis and balls photo upside down. Jeez. The balls are where, where her breasts are and the the tip of the penis goes right where her vagina is. That oh, is completely uh, sexist and uncalled for and yada, yada, yada and uh, Mel Chauvinist patriarchy bullshit. Another one. More of the, these people. Go away. It's like, <laughs> wait a minute. In this case, it's like, uh, I kind of was, you know, brushed off but because we're talking about this. <laughs> right. This whole aspect. And it's like, one, Black, um, Black Lightning... It's a good movie. That's a good show. Yeah. We'll get into that. In a, but uh, Black Panther um, is going to be one of the... It's going to be a fucking hit. If it's not a fucking hit, uh, there's going to probably be issues. It, it looks like it's going to be good. It's going to be wonderful. Uh, I have I think I shared the post, like, how they somebody was bitching and complaining that uh, how it wasn't actually shot in Africa. Oh, and gee. <laughs> yeah, it's like how they were shot in like uh, Hawaii and Korea and uh, sound stages and uh, not r- really in Africa. And somebody commented on it that, oh, newsflash, folks, Star Wars wasn't actually shot in space. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, and, and it's like that was the best comeback ever. <laughs> but um, oh, it, it's that. just. It, it it's stupid. It's stupid. Uh, now I'm but, looking at this picture. I wanted to see what this dick and balls on wasp woman. Yeah. 
that's a stretch, dude. That is a like you got to be really sick in the head. Yeah, you... to me, it just looks like they've highlighted her breast area, and then like the middle is supposed to look like a bug's thorax. Like it doesn't look like a dick and balls to me at all. Like it looks like. Like, if your dick and balls look like that, then you should go to a doctor, number one. Number two, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't I don't see what they're seeing. I don't, you know, it's like, even if you flip it over, like, if my balls were separated like that, like, again, I'd want to go see a medical professional. <laughs> That's number one. Or two, you'd be making a hell of a lot more money on the... Uh, <laughs> in a separate circuit instead of where you're working now. <laughs> I mean, the, the costume looks fine to me. I don't under people are people are ridiculous. They will find a problem with anything. Which which kind of brings up the question is that one of the things I usually say when it comes to like Amazon products or a oh. product on Amazon. Uh, let's take because I'm looking at it straight in front of me the uh, SNES Classic. Right. Uh, if you went on. Uh, a site like Amazon, you're going to have a shit ton of positive reviews and a shit ton of negative reviews, or I should say five star and one star. Right. Now, the question I usually bring up is like, well, this is getting a lot of five star reviews. And my usual question is, okay, how many of those one, five star reviews were paid for? Yeah. How many of those one stars were paid for? Yeah. And I mean, like, the answer I usually get is, I don't know. Why would somebody pay for five stars and one stars? Well, here's the thing. People like Nintendo will probably pay a mess of people to, quote, um, even though you'll have a lot of natural five stars, they'll pay a bunch of people to make it sound natural and give a five-star review. So when you come up to the, the product and wish to buy it, you see all these five-star reviews saying how, how much this is a wonderful product, and therefore, gee, golly gee, I wonder if this is, with all these people saying it's five stars, i got to own it too. It's got to be that good. Now, you have the opposite front, where you might have a bunch of people from other companies coming in. Oh, we don't want people to buy the NES Classic. Let's buy... Uh, um, Get a bunch of people to uh, pay a bunch of people to post one star reviews. So instead of buying their product, they'll buy our product instead. Right. And it's kind of hard to differentiate. The best thing you can do is if you see that product in the wild, or you know, if you go to uh, Joey's house, and even though Joey's a mutual friend of somebody else, ask Joey how he's liking that fucking product. Well, and it's just like it's just like what we were talking about with movies a couple episodes ago. Like this whole thing with Star Wars. Like when those reviews came out, those Rotten uh, Tomatoes reviews. Like the critics were way off from what people actually thought. They were raving about the movie. You know, expecting. I think almost like they just expected it to be a great movie and just kind of like phoned it in. And it turned out people didn't like it. <laughs> you know. Right. And, and but it was almost like Disney was like, you better give this a good review, or like you know your magazine's going down the shit, or your your website's gonna get fucking pulled, or you know whatever. Like you better you better do what we say, or else, you know. <clears throat> and you know, people like independent people, people like individuals aren't beholden to any corporations or anything like that. So they were being honest. Yeah, this movie fucking sucked, you know, and. I, I think that's that has a lot to do with like the review scheme too. You know, I, like some people who like if if somebody's going to carry a product, you know, they're gonna they're gonna say, oh yeah, it's it's great, it's wonderful, it's the best thing since sliced bread. And like you know, independent people will be like, nah, it kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you, there are people, even though it's kind of our job to review things and see a little bit of the at least what I tell people, it's like it's my job to see. The, the negative in, in the good. Yeah, that's my job. Right. Uh, it, in a way, that's what it is. It's like, if I'm going to do a review, it's like, I got to see... Granted, there might be a lot more good or a lot more bad, but if it's really, really bad, I got to find something good with this. Right. And if there's something really, really bad, uh, good, there's, there's something I got to find negative about it. Um, 
it that's my job and i don't want to say well this is what i went this is my opinion on this and i could be like with star wars i could be a big fan of it and it's like you know this is not you know anywhere near where it should have been there there are problems with it and not not to jump off subject (laughs) too bad go ahead uh but I'm going to jump off subject too bad. I was thinking about this the other day when I was at uh, Walmart because I was walking around there. We were doing a little bit of shopping and I looked over, we were passing through where the toy section is. Um, There were a lot of star Wars toys from the holiday season that were on clearance, like double clearance. Uh, And by a lot, I mean like racks full. And it wasn't just from the new movie. It was going back some of the older characters, like some of the stuff from the last movie. Like, you know, I mean, they were on clearance, clearance. Um, in the little kids section where the, like, the shirts and stuff where my son shops for his clothes, a lot of the Star Wars stuff was on clearance. Uh, shirts, hats, socks, everything. Do you think that the new movie has actually hurt the franchise, has hurt the brand? Then I want to say that then from some of the sources I've been hearing, uh-huh. are there's a possibility uh, because of it because uh, there have been a lot of people, uh, even though that some of the people are stretching. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put it like that because uh, some of the sources are agreeing along along the lines of like you and I in regards to this plot holes, uh, you know, the, the, there's bad writing or writing wasn't really up to par. Uh, but there are other people saying that, you know, certain characters like Rose and uh, the, the Admiral that pretty much took uh, Leia's place for a little while, all this was, you know, uh, kind of in essence, SJW star Wars. Right. Uh, that, that was the stretch that they were going um, that the reason why we had Rose in this cat in this this thing this episode eight is because they want to pander to uh, uh, China, the the Asian audience and the Chinese audience, which didn't work. Um, yeah, right. Uh, but that was that, and because of everybody seeing this as more of a meh type of ordeal, mm-hmm. they they're not. You know, going to that aspect, mm-hmm. not to mention when I think stores like Walmart and maybe Target, uh, they are seeing that there might be a bigger rush towards Black Panther, Ant-Man, uh, probably Ant-Man and Wasp, I should say Ant-Man and Wasp, um, Marvel's uh, Infinity Wars. These might be the bigger toy sellers than what Star, Star Wars was, mm-hmm. for one. Uh, the other thing is that because uh, these, especially Black Panther and uh, 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 Infinity Wars are going to be the two big movies over the next couple of months that a lot of people have been say, saying that they're going. Disney's already written off Solo. They've already written off Solo. Yeah. That's why you're not seeing a trailer, any, you know, type of movie posters, which we will... We'll get back to like one or two other topics in a minute in regards to Disney, but uh, this is a perfect segue to probably our next topic. But um, you're not seeing the the I think Solo comes out in uh, late May, early uh, early June. And they're ri- writing these the stuff off because okay, the big next big movie is Black Panther. Uh, one right after that is going to be uh, Marvel's. Uh, it's going to be um, probably Ready Player One. Yeah. Probably. Wow. Um, probably. Because you're going to probably have a lot of people going to see Ready Play- Player One at the end of March, early April, to catch every single one of those fucking Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, then after that, you're going to have Star- uh, Marvel's uh, Infinity Wars. With all these big hits, and especially with Infinity Wars going to be in theaters more than a month because people are going to be going back. Uh, will Infinity Wars, War, Infinity Wars hit a billion dollars worldwide? Sure. More than likely. Um, but uh, what's going to happen is Star Wars Han Solo, which comes out 
early this year, uh, like I said, sometime in May, maybe June, they are they were writing off because everybody's going to be seeing uh, Infinity Wars, and especially what happened with uh, Episode Eight. Do they really want to touch Solo? There might be that bad blood and that bad taste in their mouth. Yeah. They, yeah, you know, I mean, I would think that they'd want to double down, you know, a little bit <laughs> just because of, like, you know, that franchise is going to lose out if, if they don't right. have something that bounces back hard. Like, Rogue One really helped um, The Force Awakens. Right. It really helped that, that, that – it really helped it to bounce back because it was it was a superior movie. Um, but <clears throat> it also satisfied the fans in between movies. You know what I'm saying? So Solo's going to have to do a hell of a job satisfying the fans between the next Star Wars movie coming out. And from what I've heard, Ron Howard was not the first director for for uh, Solo. No. It was someone else. Yeah. And, and he had to uh, – I'm I'm not a fan of Ron Howard. I'm, I'm, I'll say that right now. Right. I'm not a fan of Ron Howard. I'm not saying he does bad bad movies. When he wants to tell a story, he could tell a hell of a story. And if he's given a crap story like Dark Tower, mm -hmm. uh, which probably had a lot of... Dark Tower could have been way better, but it had a lot of studio... I, I won't say it had a, too many studio hands in it that Ron Howard gave it its, his best. He gave it his best, trying to, you know, polish the turd that Dark Tower that was going to be. I just don't, uh, I don't know if action science fiction is, like, his forte. You know what I mean? Like... He did. He did a really great job, you know, with some of his earlier films, but I, I don't see him really, like, you know, pushing the envelope. You know, he's not. He's not like a James Gunn. He's not going to do anything that's like breakthrough, like you know, groundbreaking. I should say with uh, with Solo. Right, but he knows how to. I want to say he knows how to tell a story. Well, he does. So I just wonder what. That, kind that's of story what I want to give him credit for. I wonder what kind of story Solo is going to be. Is it, is it going to be more drama heavy or more sci-fi heavy? Uh, I guess we'll see when it finally drops this year, if it does. Right. Uh, I've been hearing that uh, we'll probably see a trailer uh, Super Bowl, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, don't quote me on it. Right. But uh, I've been hearing that we'll be seeing a brand new trailer for uh, uh, Black Panther, Super yeah. Bowl, and probably well, uh, Infinity well, Wars trailer. Uh, Cloverfield is supposed to drop on some uh, Super Bowl. Uh, apparently, but we haven't, you know, uh, from what I've been hearing, uh, Cloverfield 3, like we mentioned last week, uh, it might be released this year. And well, Cloverfield... And it, it, has, it has a tentative date, April 20th, uh, and it's called The God Particle. Do you know and the here's the thing. Here's the thing. Now that I know that information... Mm -hmm. It it might not um, it might not my prediction for it for that weekend mm -hmm. since it, you're saying it drops on April twentieth four twenty yep uh, it's not going to be a success of course it's not going to be a success it, anyway it's going to be <laughs> if it, it it if it the last one was it top tops it's mm -hmm. going to be number three yeah. Number three, the, the folks. Let me say it like this: Number one is going to probably, depending on how good it is, for that slot, is going to be Ready Player One. Right. By the time 420 hits, Ready Player One is going to still be in the number one slot, or it's going to be in the number two slot. By the time 420 hits, the, the end of that weekend, what's going to be in that one or two slot is going to be Super Troopers Two, probably. Because Super Troopers 2 comes out 420. Oh, that's right. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> so, did you hear, do you know what the what the uh, um, plot is? Have you For heard about God that? Particle? Yeah. Um, it, it's going to be taking, I think, this was the one that's going to be taking place on a uh, space station. Yes. So, this so, takes place on a space station. Uh, it is... Supposed to be um, something like the they do some experiment and Earth disappears, and they're confronted with an alien ship. So I think that's that's 
it has promise. If the trailers are good, people will go see it. Um, the other thing I thought was surprising, which shocked me, was that they already have Cloverfield 4. It was supposed to say, they were saying that it was in production. It's done. And apparently it's called Overlord. This is the, this will be the fourth installment and it's ready now. It'll be out this Christmas. Is wow. What, yeah, is what they're trying to say. And the premise of this one is that it takes place during World War II, where, uh, these, uh, soldiers go on some special mission and take on, uh, uh, Nazis that apparently have some kind of superpowers. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, depending on how they do number three, let me put it like this: from what you told me and from what I heard in regards to yeah. uh, Cloverfield three, because uh, as I said last week in regards to the whole Cloverfield thing, that yeah. the whole a- aspect of uh, this being J.J. Uh, J. Abrams' baby, so to speak. That him wanting to do a whole aspect of an anthology is fucking bullshit. Yeah, I don't um, think. See, I, I think that. How but I? he's. I, I'm willing to say he's trying to connect with three. From what you you're saying, if it actually happens that way, he's trying with yeah. the third one. They're yeah. trying to connect uh, the first one and the second one. Right. I think there's a loose connection through all of them, and I think that's exactly what it's meant to be. It's kind of like they just call him Cloverfield or it's Project Cloverfield or whatever you want to call it. I think that they all have – there's just a, like little Easter eggs in each one that connect all the movies, but they're uh, otherwise they're sort of unrelated. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think – I don't think that – it's meant to be one. I don't. I don't think that it's meant to culminate in like something that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I think at the end of the day, each movie is a standalone movie with with, with a tie-in. But that's they all take place in the same universe. Let's put it that way. Kind of like the hinting that it all takes place in the same. It does, but it doesn't. Right. Kind of like uh, how DC uh, comics all take place in the same universe, yet they don't. Right. In a way, but uh, it. it like I said last week, it, that makes things fucked up. You know, it's like he, he, he said, even though the first one was kind of a standalone, he, and I hated the ass. You've seen it with Lost when Lost was out in, on TV. Yeah. You've seen it with uh, uh, Cloverfield. Is oh, you go to this website. You know, if you really want to dig, yeah, it adds a little something to the movie or to the show. But for the most part, for the most part, fans are going to be like, what the fuck. Well, I don't know. Yeah. It, to me, it kind of reminded me of like, I don't know how to describe it. Those old TV shows where it was kind of like either a horror or a sci-fi show where each each story was standalone, but you have a little tie-in and that like, you know, you can always reference back to, you know what I mean? Like this happened, so this happened. So, you know, but like at the same time, like it's off on its own tangent. I thought, 10 Cloverfield Lane was actually really good. It, like, it, I, it that had its own little twist. It surprised the shit out of me, and the acting was great, because, you know, I love John Goodman. Um, but, uh, like, the end of it, I thought was great, and it, like, it was, like, kind of, like, action, like, you know, we haven't really seen before, with, like, you know, it kind of it, it kind of threw me off. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting all that to happen. You know what I mean? And then towards the danger, like, okay, I'm going to make a difference. Like, spoilers if you haven't seen it. Um, I'm going to make a difference. I was hoping that they would do something with that, but I kind of get where, you know, we don't need to do something like that. We can just tell a new story. So <clears throat> I, I see where they're going with it all. I don't know if it's all going to eventually make sense. But at the same time, I kind of I dig that it's its own little story, its own little world. That's cool. And one of but, the things – go ahead. Oh, I was just going to um, – well, you go ahead. You go ahead because you're probably going to talk about No, I'm, I'm looking something up real quick, so go go ahead. Oh, it, what it I might lead say, it. we're talking about movies and stuff. So have you heard of something called Movie Pass? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's supposed to be that aspect that you, if you're – for 10 bucks a month, you could uh, go online and get, you know, in essence, free tickets for uh, a movie that just came out. In, uh, you can, in essence – 
show, uh, go to a place like Regal or Alamo Draft House, show them the pass and see whatever currently is in theaters for free. Yeah, one movie per day. So, like, do you think that that's a good deal, or do you think that that's like something that's going to like kind of fish people in, and they're going to raise the price, or like, do you think it's how, what do you think of something like that? Uh, I've been th- that aspect is I, I, since this is. I'm not knocking you for bringing this up, but it, it, it was one of those things that was kind of tossed back and forth uh, when it first came out a few years ago. Right. Uh, that not every – it might be something that goes along the wayside right. uh, because it not many people are going to go into it because it's 10 bucks a month. Yeah. Uh, and depending on – it, not every theater is going to uh, – sign up for this right? for whatever reason. Uh, they're going to see it, uh, meaning that though a Alamo draft house mm-hmm. where they're primarily their stick is we have beer, we have uh, uh, this full menu Delicious. that you can have uh, all, all this food to eat uh-huh. and therefore, you know, screw the, you know, screw the ticket. Right. You, you're gonna, you know, the money you save in essence on the food. I mean, on the ticket, you're gonna spend on the food. So right. they might be, the, you know, they might, for the sake of argument, jump in on this. Right. Where the aspect of a Regal or a, an IMAX might go, this is not for us. Our take, you know, our costs that we would need get from that ticket. Right. Meaning, if it's that fifty percent share, it, it's not going to help us in any way yeah we well, might, your you know, local your local the martinsburg theater takes it uh the regal maybe no they do yeah for sure uh uh the berkeley plaza might not they will do. not yeah they do not um i looked up the i just looked up the locations and alamo does um the one at the mall whatever it's called now big d i don't know Steve. i was just using regal and ammo as right for the sake but of no, they actually take it they actually take it um, according to their website, they actually take it. So I just, for somebody that goes to the movies a lot, you know, I, it, it's kind of a good deal. I just, today was honestly the first I had ever heard of it. I figured maybe you'd heard of it or whatever, but yeah, today was the first time I had ever heard of it. And I just was like, really 10 bucks a month. That's it. Cause I mean, like if I go see two movies, shit, if I go see two movies in like one month, it's already, I've, that, the tickets already paid for. Right. So I'm like, well, <laughs> you know. And for the most part, it's like how long – I think the question that was proposed in regards to this is how – even though it's been probably out for at least – I want to say at least a year, uh, that how long is this going to, one, be relevant still Yeah. Um, in regards to – or how long is it going to be available for theaters to go, wait a minute, wait a minute, people are using this like you and I – you know, ten bucks a month. I get the card. I get to see a brand new movie a week, and I'm saving money. Yeah. For ten bucks, I'm seeing four movies. Uh, um, I could see thirty movies in the well, course of a month. They figure you're probably going to spend money on food, which is where they make all their money anyway. Yeah, all, the bulk all of their theaters, profits they anyway. They theaters don't make shit off tickets. They right. really don't make shit. So, like, they figure you're going to spend money on food. So, the funny thing is, and I, I'll, I'll say this. And this is not an advertisement for the Alamo, but for your value, a place like the Alamo, I don't know where people live, if you know, if they have something that's similar, but somewhere that offers like more than just popcorn, candy and nachos, like they actually offer like pizza, uh, hamburgers, like French fries, like milkshakes, like, you know, it's a, it's a full service restaurant and a really good one run inside of a theater. And folks, again, with regards to ticket prices and what me and Big Candy are saying is that, uh, again, like we said it before, uh, the average average uh, cost that a a theater gets in regards to tickets, I know last year we mentioned in regards to what Disney wanted their share for the ticket prices for Disney, uh, Star Wars was going to be, but the average is about 50%. Yeah. Uh, meaning, uh, where that's their overhead, right? That, that, that's, they're not making, uh, theaters are not making that much money off of the tickets. No. They're making 
the higher profit off of whereas a big bag of unpopped popcorn might cost them uh, 50 bucks. And if they sell a, a, a small bag for five yeah. after 10 bags, you know what? They're making their money back. Yeah. They, you know, they're, after 10 bags, they're making their money back, which they're going to do on a Friday easily. Yeah. Because so, I, I, cause here, here's my thing. Me and me and the wife have not been to a regular theater probably since Alamo came <laughs> to our area. Right. And we went to go see Thor Ragnarok over at the regular theater, I'll say, the, the mall theater. And it was the first time I'd been in there. And it was, I mean, it, it, it took me back. <laughs> Let's put it this way. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh, like the seats are tight. Like, you know, there's no table in front of me. Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> I can't order food for my seat. I'm, what is this crap? It's cold in here. Uh, <laughs> um, we, we vowed never to do it again. It was that bad. <laughs> but, like, the thing is it was just a regular theater, so I really have nothing to complain about. But the biggest thing was we couldn't believe the price of the food. Like, for value, if I'm going to get something, I'll spend $9, you know, $10 on a sandwich and French fries and a Coke. Whereas if I go, you know, to a regular theater, oh, my gosh, what did it cost us? All we got was a popcorn and a large drink to share because it was so much. It was almost like $18.00. I think that we spent just on a popcorn and a drink. Yeah, the, the, and then the that's price the thing with me. Was, on top of that, the price again was like nine bucks a piece. That's the thing with me. It's like when I go to, uh, um, for the most part, if I want to go to see a movie, I'm going to go up to see if I can go to Berkeley, the Berkeley Plaza Theater, in regards instead of Regal, yeah. because I, if I have twenty bucks, I know. If I could get there early enough, I could get in for five dollars, mm-hmm. uh, get a, a a large drink, the largest that they've got, small popcorn and nachos, and still have change left over. Yeah, and this is up a dollar or two from uh, maybe four dollars. I think the, their matinee one day was like uh, a few years ago was like three bucks, yeah. like three to four dollars. And the reason why they upped it is because they redid their seats yeah. to nice plush seats that kind of lean back and the arms have cup holders and yeah. so forth and so on. <laughs> uh, and they uh, put in a digital system. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the cost is understandable. they got to make up that somehow. Right. Uh, so increasing the ticket prices is one, one way. Uh, but for the most part, their uh, concession prices are, are the same. Right. I didn't notice an increase. If they were, it wasn't that much anyway. Right. Um, so I was still with the same $20, I'm getting the same stuff, yeah. and it's changed left over. And, Versus well, me going to Regal, I have to pay 10 bucks for to, for a ticket matinee. Uh, then I have to spend another uh, $6 on, you know, a, a, a drink, a medium drink. <laughs> And another six dollars on a small thing. I'm like, wait a minute, that's more than twenty. I'm giving you more than what I have. Yeah, right. You know, right. It's yeah. So it's heck with this, you know. But the only reason why I go to Regal sometimes is that wait a minute, I gotta, you know, I want to catch the bus back. Yeah. And you know, because I want to use the bus, I'm catching the bus pass. You know what? I'm gonna, you know, you see a movie in Regal. Maybe you just have a soda or something. Then you know do my grocery shopping, then take the bus back, you know, close to the house. Right. So. I like, we, we luckily have one more option here, and that's the drive-in, which is like two movies for eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> right. And, Plus, and you like, can probably smuggle in your own food, too. Yeah, you bring your own food in. Well, they ask if you bring your own food in to, like, chip in five bucks to help them out, which is not a problem. No, no. Yeah. No. So, like, and, and I want to, I want that place to keep being there, so I do that willingly. Um, but, yeah, like, you can bring in a pizza, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Like, you can go to their stand. They got really good food. They, they make fried shrimp. What else is the other thing that they have? They do hamburgers on the grill, hot dogs on the grill. They do, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, funnel cakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. That place is nuts. It's, it's so much fun in, in the summertime. And like so, you're getting a good value. It, it's it's these theaters like like the Regals and the one that we have here, the the Big D whatever theater it is, 
they they kind of scare me because it's just like ugh, it's not a very comfortable place to see a movie, you know. What I mean? <laughs> so uh, like, I know a lot of people was like, "Why would you go to Berkeley Theater? It, it, they got stinky floors." And I'm like, dude, that's the whole beauty of you exactly. know a, a bad you know. Even though I'm not saying that they're a bad theater, but a theater like that with sticky floors and yeah. uh, back when they had the the creaky seats and all that, it's like I want to see a kung fu. Me- Movie marathon in this. I want to see a Godzilla movie marathon right. in this theater. I'm, you know, it, you know. This our two dollar theater, man. The the gym bought them out. Now it's a swimming pool. But it like back in the day, like not too long ago, uh, you could go out there and see second run movies for two bucks, and even the, even the popcorn and soda were cheap. Like you get you could you could do a date night there for less than twenty dollars. And that, that's that's pretty great. So, but yeah, like so, I don't know. The movie pass thing sounds kind of intriguing to me, um, especially like you're because you're saving money if you really go to the theater a lot. And my my usual ex, excuse is that I don't go because they don't show movies when I want to go see them, <laughs> which is in the morning. <laughs> but um, if I if I had that, I'd probably make I'd probably try to go more. I guess. Yeah, if if you do do it, let me know. You know, yeah. experiment with it. Let me know. Uh, we'll you know on, on an upcoming episode or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that way we know more and can tell you, the listeners, uh, what we think or at least one of us thinks. Um, and to kind of continue this uh, kind of topic and kind of ties into our last topic with Disney is: Have you heard about this whole red box bullshit? Kinda. Uh, Folks out there that might not know this because I didn't really share it and I tried looking into it. Basically, here's folks out there uh, who don't really remember places like Blockbuster and the independent. There might be places out there that still do rent movies, but um, I'm not talking Netflix, but I'm talking about a standalone mom and pop, you know, go down to the store on a Friday night and rent a movie. Uh, Basically, back in the day, uh, if someone wanted to, or a store like Blockbuster, Redbox, or uh, what have you, wanted to rent a movie such as Spider-Man Homecoming, or um, a Harry Potter, or whatever the movie was, they would pay uh, 50 60 maybe $70 for that DVD, just for the rights to rent it. Oh, it was, it, was, and, yeah, it was always like, because I, I worked at... It was a movies. rental DVD. It was I, a rental no, DVD or VHS. I, I worked at like three or four of those places. So <clears throat> I remember seeing the, the buy sheets, and it was like $99 a copy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it was uh, crazy expensive. Yeah. Uh, I remember back as a kid, my, my dad bought, because he wanted a VHS copy of... Uh, Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. And the only way he could buy it is buying a rental copy yeah. of Ghostbusters. And it came in like, instead of that, slipping it out the bottom, you had to open it like a box yep. and slide it out. Uh, and it caught, from what I remember, uh, that cost like $100 mm-hmm. back in like and when it came out on tape. The, the, um, the, 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 v, the video cassette tapes that are the actually the, the rental copy tapes, they're actually made better than the standard videotape. They're more heavy duty, um, and it's more it's something like the actual the film that they use in it is like a higher grade film than what they use like for uh, just the buy copies. Um, each one is like I think it's like dubbed it. They were dubbed at like half speed or something like that rather than like full speed, and like something like um, the sound quality was better, and they were they were just made to last longer. Because they were going to get played, but, and played, and played, and played, and played. And then we- that, that's one thing, reason for why they were expensive. The other reason was because they were uh, the whole aspect of copyright. Yeah. And therefore, uh, instead of going to one person, they ha- it, it was going to be rented out to multiple people. And over the course, depending on the movie, like Ghostbusters or Star, or Star Wars, uh, um, a rental place could make that money back within two or three weeks. Yeah. And what they would do is after that, they would sell – They'll reduce the number of copies if they had like 15, 20 copies. They would sell a bunch of the copies for roughly ten, fifteen dollars, mm. and keep two copies. Yep. And nowadays, what uh, what's happening is that with Redbox is because the more and more people 
are going the way of Netflix and everything else, and this that whole rental market is kind of going by the the wayside. Yeah. Uh, for the exception of like digitally and uh, Netflix. Yeah. Uh, what Redbox being the only place where you, if you went down to a Walmart or a supermarket like a uh, food line or Martin's or whatever <laughs> uh, is near you, dear listener, uh, <laughs> uh, I, we're all, this is depending on where they are in the country. Um, I don't know what might be, what supermarket chains might be in California <laughs> or uh, Montana, but uh, you know, Redbox is everywhere. You know, they they could be in front of a McDonald's for all I fucking know. Yeah. Uh, but the, what's going on is that uh, right now Disney went at uh, the current people to go after Redbox because they're renting movies uh, is Disney. And what Di- uh, Redbox decided to do is, oh, fuck, no, we're going to, you know, they're starting to, because Disney is starting up their own streaming service. They're trying to hinder what Redbox is doing and saying, right. no, you're not, you can't rent our movies in any way, shape, or form. And what Redbox is saying, you know what? Yes, we can. And they're suing Disney in regards to this. Mm. And what they're, from what I've been hearing, they're able to do is that they're going through a wholesaler to get the DVDs that they need oh. to uh, uh, rent them out. So the people kind of winning, even though both sides in a way are winning because Disney's getting, uh, because people are buying the DVDs in a way, um, is Disney in some aspect. But the bigger winner in this aspect is uh, uh, Redbox because if you have, if Redbox is is renting out to someone like you and me or whoever's listening, uh, a ultra high def, a Blu-ray, and a uh, regular DVD in the same machine, and they bought that for let's say twenty dollars for each DVD that they are renting out of that one case. They're making six bucks a night. Oh yeah. So within like maybe six nights, or if that DVD is rented, uh, of only like five times they're, they made their money back and they're making bank off of it oh, for sure. because they're renting three they bought one DVD in essence for 20 bucks they got three copies in it an ultra high def a blu-ray and a D- regular DVD hey uh, they're making their money back right away oh absolutely and they're making bank off of it right away and just that a lot of companies are like <laughs> oh how dare you yep, they're going wait a minute we have the right to do this now they, uh, Redbox, for a while, tried to pull a Netflix. Yeah. That For the folks out there, this was way back in maybe early, uh, maybe 2014, maybe early 2015, if not earlier. Uh, I was living in, uh, here in Martinsburg for a while when they decided to do this. Uh, basically, what Redbox tried to do was for $10 a month, you could rent... <laughs> You had access to their streaming service. Right. And you had access to, uh, instead of paying like two bucks a, a night for their DVDs, you were able to pay a dollar a night. Well, the first night was free. I remember that. And, but because, again, this is how big Netflix was, because Netflix on the streaming side was such a big juggernaut. That streaming service kind of went by the wayside. It did, yeah. You don't hear about it anymore. I don't think you could find their streaming service anymore. And from what I saw, the streaming service was kind of sucky. Yeah. It was more more or less like uh, how Vudu is. Right. And it was a combination of Vudu and maybe more along the lines of Amazon Prime. Yeah. Meaning you could buy, you could rent, and with Amazon Prime, you could stream. Right for free, uh, it was more like that. But it they didn't have the video library that Amazon and Netflix had, mm-hmm. and if not Hulu, so they it's like they were the ultra little 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 guy. Mm-hmm. Where even if uh, a place like uh, Paramount or Sony, if they have their own stuff, 
they could sell it directly to you, and you still have access to it through Vudu or uh, or any place that has like the uh, uh, kind of the uh, digital sharing type of ordeal. Right. That whatever your digital uh, preferences, Amazon or Vudu, mm-hmm. you you have it. Yeah. So, which is good. Um, it is good. That's I, what... I just, you know, <laughs> we were talking about the, the, the rental places. I wonder, is that something that in the future that you can see coming back? Like, not not so much corporate, like Blockbuster and stuff like that, but, like, you know, but as a mom and pop, kind of like a small business kind of thing? Maybe. Because I just, Not in- there are times when I'm sitting here and I'm like, man, I really want to see this old ass movie. And I remember I could go to Blockbuster and I could rent it anytime I wanted, you know, or I could go to na- name your video place, name the local video place. I could go and find a copy of something weird or something I'd never seen before or some old movie because nine times out of 10, you can't, you can't find it online. If you do, it's a really piss poor quality copy. You know, like it, it's like. You know, if you if you if you download it, it's gonna suck. It's gonna have like, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be terrible. It's gonna take forever. I, I can agree with that because I have on my Vudu account, uh, believe it or not, even though it's got a zero, it's the lowest rated uh, Rotten Tomatoes score thing I have in my uh, digital library on Vudu. <laughs> it's um, uh, Revenge of the Living Dead Part Two. Right. <laughs> It's a zero percent rated movie, right. um, and I can't watch it past midway point. Right on Voodoo. for whatever reason, I could watch it up to about midway, about the fifty minute mark, yeah, give or take, and it will stop. Right. The video will stop, and it was like then it'll give me the error saying uh, something's wrong with our servers. Yeah, there are a lot of we can't play this. Like that. And. The same thing goes with, like, uh, Night of the Creeps. It'll get about midway through or a little bit greater than mid, about the hour mark and stop and say, oh, there's a problem with our servers, you know. And I could stop. I could back out of the app, go back into the app. Right. And it'll still get, I don't know if it's because it's uh, Voodoo trying to get through the Xbox One servers or not because I don't have a, uh, um, like a, a uh, a Roku device, right? Or Voodoo's actual little thumb drive. Well, here's type the, of deal. here's the other aspect to it that I don't know if if you remember and if you miss going into a place and actually looking for something. Oh yeah, yeah, I've done that. Uh, like, now, I want to say this: things down. It, it just I can't, it's like our lives are so convenient now, especially like with like you know having on demand stuff. It's just you can just turn on your TV and you don't even have to get up. You're just like, bup. Then you had to actually go out, go to the, go to the place, look for a movie. Some people would say that as a hassle. That gives me something to do, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that, that, um, that's the thing. It's like I have the DVD copy of – I remember seeing this. It's a bad movie. Bad, bad. It's one of those things that I enjoyed as a teenager because – Mostly, it was probably geared towards teens. Right. Uh, uh, teen boys were with raging hormones. Um, the movie was called, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, called Reform School Girls. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I've heard of that one. Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's geared towards teen boy. It, it's one of those. It's like, as an adult, if you watch, it's like. Why this movie sucks, but it's like, why do I enjoy this movie? Oh yeah, I, I, I was like thirteen. <laughs> I want, to go, uh, I want to go find a copy of Robot Jocks. But I found it. <laughs> ironically, I found this movie on not on V. I found it on VHS because somebody had it at a yard sale on VHS, right. and I was like, yes, I found this on VHS. It was like an accomplishment, and like. Um, Three years ago, uh, one of the retro gaming shops had it on DV fucking D for a dollar. I'm like, I'm like, here's a dollar six. <laughs> I want this. 
uh, and also, I looked also, at it. It's like normally I wouldn't have picked it up, but it had commentary on it. But, it's like, oh my god, it's got commentary. I want this so bad. Uh, <laughs> I've yet to watch it. It's lurking around my house right now. But it's not just looking for the movies too. There was also the aspect of like the atmosphere, like the 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 popcorn popping in the background, like you know, like they always had popcorn in these places. Always had right popcorn. for some reason. Uh, you know the 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 drinks and the, the the cooler. Then you the the bad blue rug with like the weird film things on it. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I get money, that's going to probably be part of the, my uh my man cave in the basement. Yeah, you know? exactly. Uh, ba- some bad blue rug. It could be a brand new rug. It's going to be blue. I'm going to have a popcorn maker and a small little <laughs> uh, glass it's soda. Like, ma- it's like going into an old movie theater. <laughs> or an old movie Put all my DVDs down there, you know. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Widescreen TV. Oh, yeah. Fuck, find an old had, CRV had, TV. Like, they always had the TV up in the corner somewhere with some weird... Yeah, put, like yeah. put the 52-inch TV right in the corner. It's like, the hell is, <laughs> the hell is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't have to get But there. I think in most areas, uh, even though uh, I was kind of pleasantly surprised to see uh, Q the Winged Beast on both Voodoo and on YouTube, free on YouTube, right. uh, but in areas where... Uh, in the United States, where high, true high speed access is not uh, available yeah. to most people or commonly available to most people, I still see the aspect of these rental places being a thing. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. In some, uh, if not so much on the blockbuster level or a uh, uh, Hollywood rent the movie level, but more so on the mom and pop level. Right. Because the mom and pop. Businesses are easier to get into, yeah. That or get into areas than the bigger name corporations, right? Um, I mean, if you had if you had access to a really decent movie collection and just a small space, you wouldn't need a lot of space. Just a small space. I, I think something like that would be relatively successful. It, it, it might, yeah, depending on what you had yeah. in a small space. There, um, there was an episode, well, not an episode, but there was like a Kevin Smith. I don't know if you ever keep up with him on Facebook, but there was a place he went. I forget. I want to say it was in Colorado because he was up there doing something. And it was a, a movie rental place that had a, like the front of it was all like a rental place, you know, that, so they had copies of like you know weird stuff they had mall rats and clerks and stuff and he thought that was cool but then literally the backs of it the back of it opens up into a full like pub (laughs) (laughs) like but it was like through a secret door like you had to like push one of the movie uh one of the uh movie racks forward and it would open up into this secret pub (laughs) you know i don't know if you can find that anywhere but he i bet he he was like Ecstatically oh, surprised, dude. He flipped shit. It was the coolest thing. And like, if you can find it, you should watch it. It's really neat. And that's the beauty of it. It's like uh, I've shared many, uh, many times. I think on this this show, um, back uh, when I was let go from uh, one particular employer uh, about going on eight years ago, uh, that there was this movie group where I live. Uh, it was like maybe uh, it was here in town. His claims was that uh, you know I have a, a nice sixty-inch flat-screen TV, uh, a bunch of movies. I'm doing a, it was more like it's supposed to be like a kind of like a, a book group right. type of ordeal. Uh, y'all, you know, sit down, watch a movie, whatever it is, and you know, just maybe talk about it afterwards. Uh, he was, let, let me put it politely, a dork. Uh, uh, he, he was one of these people that kind of claimed that he loved movies, but really didn't know jack shit. Um, whereas, you know, if it was someone like, you know, it, let me put it like this. There's a difference between you and I really loving movies. Yeah. And the next level would be like John Johnson. You know, it'd be like hey, seeing John, when he does these live stuff every now and again you see his what would be his area it's all like movie posters lit up and dvds yeah. and whole mess and him talking about movies that you know that's what i i wouldn't say i expected 
but, you know, or someone on, like, my level, maybe a p- movie poster up, taped up somewhere, yeah. or, you know, something gotten from maybe Spencer's Gifts or Walmart, you know, that, you you know, it's a throwaway poster, you don't have to fucking worry about it. Right. And, you know, a bunch of movie. let me put it like this, at that time, he may have had uh, 200, I know I told you this story, but I'm talking about the list is here. Sharon, for the listener's sake, but he may have had like 200 movies, if not 300. Right. Compared to me having close to 800 <laughs> plus, you know, and this was before uh, Netflix streaming was a big thing, and he didn't really know how to manage the group right. And instead of people, more people coming in, more people left, and you were coming back on a weekly basis. Now, where someone like yourself, Big Candy, would have had an issue is that I tried to tell him, it's like, listen, you got to take, I have nothing against religion or anything like that. Right. I'm sure you don't either, but what he would do is at the, at the start of each, like, oh, I don't, let's say grace over the food. Uh, you know that's going to piss people off, right? Yeah. He's like, oh, if they don't like it, yeah, again, you're telling people in essence, even at that time, I was quasi-religious. You know, I was in that neutral aspect of not that I hated religion or was an atheist or anything like that. Just that you know, I was I stepped away from religion in my own viewpoints and all that. And it's like, dude, that's how you push people away. Right. That's you know, we're we're in a social media culture. You're going, you're you're pushing people away. Yeah. And he didn't want to hear that. And it's like, and he'd rather instead of spending. Two three hundred dollars on the group as a whole to get the word out. He'd rather spend two three hundred dollars on switching the group up to uh, this, uh, going to one of these like uh, uh, dating services. I'm not saying Tinder, but kind of like uh, uh, something sim- not similar, but one of these like uh, Let's Date dot com or something like that. Right, and that you could set up a remote singles group. Not only would you have to pay them $10 a month to be a member, but if you wanted this satellite group to meet up somewhere at like a, a, a Books a Million or a, or a Starbucks or something like that, you would have to pay them $300 a year. What? Yeah. I forgot what the site was called or something like that. He, he was like, I'm going to be paying $300. i am going to probably be shutting down the... The, the movie group, because right now it's just you and I, and spend $300 to set up this, this, this singles group through this website, because that's what they charge. I'm like, dude, fuck. And it was one of those things where, at that time, uh, I, like I've told people, it's like, my, my stepdad has PTSD, real bad, um, because of what happened to him during the war, uh, Vietnam War. Right. And one of the things that uh, during this time I was going to the group, the guy who was running the group said, you know what, uh, next week is going to be uh, uh, the bucket list. I figured my dad's coming, my stepdad's coming to town. Why not take him to this group? It's going to be the bucket list. No harm, no foul. It's a safe movie. Turns out we go, it's not the bucket list that he decided to show. It was this weird, twisted B-movie starring Richard Mall from Night Court uh, that was a fantasy, violent thing. And I was like, the fuck? I told him the week later, it's like, granted, this is your group, but you didn't phone me, you didn't tell me that you were switching up at all for this. And here I am, you're making me look like a fucking asshole because I took my stepdad here thinking that the that particular week was going to be the bucket list. Right. And he's like, oh, 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 this ain't fucking funny. No, you can't do that. You can't do that shit. And I said, what if I brought a date? What if I brought a female friend to this? Again, you would make me look like the fucking asshole. For sure. And this is the same guy that, if again, folks, if I did not hear the goddamn message myself... I would have claimed bullshit. I would have instantly claimed bullshit. 
But the guy that uh, called in in regards to this group said was saying that he had uh, like over a thousand, like two to three thousand DVDs, uh, several thousand VHS, including hard to find, not no longer in print VHS, uh, eighteen, uh, like sixteen millimeter uh, celluloid films, like the original Blob. Uh, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, uh, the original stuff on film. Yeah. Uh, and he said, everything to play it on, he said, I have several hundred Blu-rays too. And he's like, I want to be a part of this group. I was like, hearing this message, like, I am not worthy to be in this motherfucker's presence. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, him having all this stuff, it's like, I was like, if I told Big Candy when I relayed the story to him, it's like, dude, I would have paid good money to have this guy come over. You know, I would set up a white bed sheet and have him play the original uh, blob on celluloid to see it that way. Oh, yeah. See it that way, uh, even though it's a bed sheet. You know, not, granted, it's not like on a big screen or anything like that like a movie screen, but a, be- a white wall or a bed sheet, to see it how it was originally meant to see- be seen right. would have been, as a movie buff, would have been awesome. Yeah, for- and if it was me doing the group, I would have, you know, it's like, dude, let me rent some of the, what, what's your list? Give me a list. I want to rent. I want to rent. I'll pay you money, you know, to get a variety of stuff in. And, uh, to be shown for part of the group. And he kind of, the guy who was running this didn't really want to do that. <laughs> and he, it, it seemed like he didn't really want to do the group or anything like that, even though it was like, really? And it's like, listen, let me bring, you know, fresh blood into this group. I have close to 800, 900 movies, uh, titles at my disposal at my house. Let me bring in, let, we could watch, we could talk about it, let, you know, let's discuss. I have, I have at that time, I had the uh, theoretical version of Avatar, like, let's watch, no one's seen it, other than myself, you know, come on. And it, it was like talking to a wall. I had to literally, almost literally twist his arm to have him, me bring in Avatar so the group could watch it. Oh, my God. And it, it'd be like one of those things like, listen, I could probably, nowadays, if I had the room for it, and that man cave, in the, I could probably get a good, more people easily to come up, see it on a 60-inch flat screen TV through, and I don't have to touch my physical copies whatsoever. Just between my <laughs> voodoo library and Netflix. You, you, you'd get a really big kick. If you live closer to where I live and you could, have, if you could go to Alamo, uh, you get a real big kick out of there every week. Every what is it? Yeah, the the psycho cinema. Yeah, the psycho cinema. Man, you you'd be out there every week. <laughs> Probably. They're always showing something weird, like you know something cool, like you know they do they do Saturday morning stuff. They get their film club. They get all kinds of stuff. You you really dig? I'd probably be there weekly, and it was like, where, what's your extra fund? Do you have any extra funds to go here? No. I mean, where are all extra money like going? When they show something, psycho it's only cinema, like five bucks too. Yeah, it was be like. Where are you going? Why are you spending like thirty dollars a week on right now? Going to Psycho Cinema daily, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> and the girl who runs is awesome, Faye. She's really cool. Um, but I work closely with her sometimes. But she she let me actually set up out there with my horror stuff one time. Um, good chance uh, I, she'll I probably. Looking, if I was able to get down there, I'd probably set up for the show too. Oh, for sure, but, for sure. Um, I was lucky enough when I was growing up. Like you talk about, you had like a film club. <laughs> we had a, a group that was just all of us watching bad movies every Friday. <laughs> I would love to do something like that. And it was like bad movie night. We we knew it was coming. We'd all we'd we'd be amped for it all week. And I like for I think for like two years straight we did it every Friday night. And um, we'd go get uh, like the cheap pizza from the mall right before they threw it out for the night. So you could go over there at eight o'clock and grab like the five dollar you know, multi sliced pizza. <laughs> we get that. Head over to Blockbuster or one of the other video places. Pick up something horrible. Because they used to have a section at the Blockbuster here that was like called Le Bad Cinema. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Uh-huh. 
Hold on, uh, folks. Even though this is going to be uh, posted on um, Mon- when you guys hear this, so this will be on probably Monday the what uh, second, third, fourth, maybe the fifth. Yeah. Uh, this is coming from a uh, uh, a website. I don't know how. Uh, breaking news! No, breaking it's news. breaking news. Honestly, it is breaking news right now, uh, motherfucking ads. It's. Uh, uh, it's going to pull that shit. Yeah, it's going to wait until every fucking uh, ad's loaded before it gives me text. Uh, Stan Lee has been rushed to the hospital. Uh-oh. Uh, it says, uh, Stan Lee rushed to the hospital after falling ill. Um, it's The article states that it's no secret that Stan Lee hasn't been in great health uh, as of late. Yeah, he, you know... He's been doing limited cons due to due his due to his age. Yeah. Uh, according to TMZ, since he uh, uh, had to cancel two different convention appearances last year due to illness. This is true. Uh, through the exact details, might not be you know it, they haven't been really saying why. Just that well, he's like ninety five years fucking old. Right. Um, uh, so according to TMZ, Lee was rushed to the hospital yesterday after. F- falling ill at home from what we understand he was short of breath and had an irregular heartbeat he said to be he said to be in stable condition at the moment but is being kept there for further observation at the moment but is being kept, oh yeah i'm rereading uh has been uh meaning further uh information hasn't been released yet uh no comment from uh stan lee's camp uh People will be they're telling people will keep everybody uh, uh, up to date, uh, and it goes on saying that uh, he's had a uh, under had a tough time lately due to the fact that he had money like three hundred thousand stolen from him and uh, numerous uh, allegations of sexual harassment, which we discussed like last hostful early mm-hmm. January, um, early to mid January when we kind of talked about that, and plus. Uh, uh, he, they said uh, he appeared to be fine earlier this week at the Black Panther premiere, uh, but uh, hopefully shortly. They said they'll get a response shortly in reference to how he's doing. This is as of one hour ago, and we're recording this on the 1st of February, uh, roughly about mm, 10 o'clock east, uh, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard. Yep. So... Uh, we, uh, as of right now, as of this recording, uh, if something does happen between now and r- me dropping the episode, I'll put something in the tail end in regards to if I hear anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for right now, we hope Stan Lee, uh, for the best for Stan Lee, hope he recovers fine. And it's not, granted, with his age, it's going to be serious, but it's not something no. too serious. But Listen, folks, <laughs> here's the thing. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. So, you know, it's one of those things where he is of the age where it's not tragic. Of course, it, you don't want to see it yes. go. I mean, oh, my gosh. He's a light in the world. He's a wonderful person. But at the same time, like, it's it's he's of the age where that's a life, you know, and it's something to be very – um happy about very proud of uh and very um something to admire you know something that you can you know that somebody could have accomplished so much and had such an impact on so many people you know to say that of one person is pretty pretty fantastic so like i said you know i think we've all been bracing ourselves for that news but you know when it happens it it's something that, you know, I, when I looked at my phone, it was like, oh, my God, I got set. We're, we're recording right now. This has got to be talked about right. a little bit. But it, it's, uh, it's, when, it's when Matt Burns puts up pictures of Mark Hamill. <laughs> fucking I saw that. I was, like, uh, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, no. <laughs> if I didn't see it like th- like three hours before, I was like, or the day before, it's like, oh, you mother... I would have been like, oh, you motherfucker, the, don't you ever the bottom, piss me off like that. And well. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, God. He got but, us uh, all with that one. 
all he got Crystal with that one. She was so pissed. <laughs> uh, probably Crystal gave the look. Uh, yeah. Oh. She no, she I think she cussed him out. <laughs> she um, she's been talking in person to or uh, uh, just to you that saying like, oh, that motherfucking cocksucker. I don't know to him. <laughs> like I said, to him, been talking because she's going to start working on um, uh, Bottom Creek. She's um, she's trying to make her way into the movie biz or like at least the modeling and stuff like that. And I, I've been trying to encourage her to do so because she's always been wanting to do like kind of behind the scenes stuff. So she called up our mutual friend, Todd Chamberlain, whose uh, project is bottom Creek. It's like a B movie horror thriller that they're shooting um, in Pennsylvania and around the area. And she's going to start doing um, uh, like crew work with the, with the movie. So she's been talking to Matt who's in the movie and uh, you know, I think Mel's in the movie and a bunch of people we mentioned on the show. So, look for that in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Happy to have uh, um, Matt on when everything solidifies and starts to come out and have Matt and Mel on the show to talk about it. Oh, for sure. Have them on. Um, if I, or if we go to uh, either you, me, or both go to uh, uh, Matt's summer uh, horror show this year. Oh, what's the, uh, count, what's the countdown Do you find out about your uh, tickets? Uh, in regards to, it's the 16th of February. Awesome. Uh, okay. but, uh, because, uh, Podbean's been, uh, up and down lately with various people. Uh, I'm on, uh, one of the Facebook groups I'm on is called Podcasting Smarter. They're, in essence, it's run by, I think, the promotional, uh, people behind Podbean. Oh. So it's, it's like if... It's one of those uh, groups that if something's going wrong, wrong with Podbean, there was like, if it's said on pod, uh, podcasting smarter, they're the, like the first people to respond to it. Oh, okay. But uh, lately, for the past few weeks, for some ungodly reason, like I could pull up my phone to check on the stats, and it would give me a, a five. Podbean would give uh, Chrome would give me a, like a five hundred three error. Like, uh, it's either timed out or it's under web maintenance or mm. we can't find it. Uh, not a 404, but it's like something's going on with the website. Oh, okay. And this has been a regular issue for the past, like I said, <clears throat> for the past month. Because I thought Austin uh, said they were going to let you know by the 2nd. Uh, at first they said the 6th. Oh, now it's the 16th. Oh. I, I, I might have misread it, seeing the 6th. Right. And thinking, oh, no, the 16th. But, um... They, um, man, it's right down to the wire, huh? Yeah. Um, but <laughs> what during the one post is like, is anybody, uh, this was, uh, last night when I got in, they were, uh, a few people were saying is, you know, is the website down? I'm getting a, you know, a 503 error. And I said, it's like, well, I it was kind of iffy earlier in the day, but for the most part, I'm getting stats right now, and I, I brought up the comments like, yeah, I hope this does not affect uh, me getting my press pass, and someone commented underneath, replied to us, like, uh, he said, uh, smaller shows are not going to check, you know, you know, people are not going to check uh, in regards to the site, and my reply was, the people that I put in for they have a tendency to give out uh, uh, because you're not too cool enough for a status. Right. And they, they, they've said that they will check. Mm -hmm. And he said, that be the case, find out that if they have an email, uh, shoot them in the email saying that if they're checking or in the process of checking that the website has uh, been up and down at various points and it's something that's not part of your control. Right. Um, so I shot them an email saying, uh, concerning uh, our press pass application, it was a subject line saying that uh, it's not concerns of um, me not getting it. I hope we are. You know, pretty much saying, I hope we as the show are getting our press pass, but my concern is pretty much with our hosting provider, Podbean, being up and down for the past month, uh, 
just wanted to let you know about this. This is not affecting just the creators. It's affecting the listeners. So please take, you know, keep this in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I hope you uh, consider us for the press pass, and I hope to see you for your at your March slash April event. So, just something to sound, just make it sound business like, yeah, yeah, and so, polite. Yeah, that's right. Just kind of, so, kind of heads up to. Yeah. So that's not bad. And I, whether or not they read it or they send the, you know, the show over the next two to three weeks saying that, no, oh, you're not cool enough for us. But, <laughs> so, uh, but speaking of which, I know you had a, a kind of a passing interest in it. Uh-huh. Um, one of the guests that, if I could bring it up, in, is, oh, let's see, you might prefer, because you are a fan, they added a few additional guests. Mm. Oh, come on, you stupid Son of a bitch website. <laughs> I didn't. I did not choose that motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just that you know I could slide up and it's like you chose this. No, I did not. Uh, do you have to- but, do you have a talkie toaster for a computer? <laughs> uh, I wish. Would you like some toast? <laughs> Would you like some toast? Uh, let's see here. You've selected toast. No, I did not. Uh, as I said, I may have stated last. <laughs> I don't know if I stated last week or, or not. Uh, you know, what's funny is like as soon as we did our uh, episode regarding you know Awesome Con and hoping you would get tickets, Karen Gillen uh, canceled. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's like if uh, we got it, I would have said something. Yeah, we get our press passes, and uh, guess what? The one of the people that we want is too afraid <laughs> to get an interview by us, uh, a piece of shit podcast like us. Uh, the person um, that they chose to be part of Awesome Con this year is Wes Johnson. Apparently, he is, according to uh, the. Uh, their description is that he's also known for, I guess he's one of the voices for the Washington Capitals. Who did you say? Uh, the name is Wes Johnson. Oh, yeah, yeah, the radio guy. Yeah. So it, he's done a lot of uh, stuff for like Fallout 3, Fallout 4, uh, video game stuff. Plus he's, uh, I guess, known for to be the radio guy behind uh, uh, Washington Capitals. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I think he's going to be there. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> he's going to be there Saturday and Sunday. So, yeah. at least you'll have somebody. If you do choose to show up, yeah. you have somebody to talk to and uh, go <laughs> gaga over. Oh, that makes me sound so <laughs> lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> it's like I'm a big fan of the Capitals. The only, the only but, person. Uh, run into at this thing is if he goes is diversity in comics. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hysterical. That guy is my goddamn hero. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets funnier and funnier every time I listen to him. And everybody hates him. Oh, did you hear? And this is this is some bullshit. Uh, what? The, uh, we're kind of going full circle here, but the uh, SJW crowd basically bullied Ethan Van Skyver off of Twitter. I kind of saw that, but I didn't see that video yet. Yeah, they 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 Nazi'd him enough that uh, he just he he quit Twitter, and that sucks because like he's the nicest guy. I don't understand what they have against him. Is it because of the people that he talks to? Because he or because he's a Republican or, or what? Probably uh, the people he talks to. Right. Uh, they don't, and that from what I've heard through diversity in comics that. And what Diversity Comics has shown Mm -hmm. in his videos is that, and from what I've heard about even Van Slider, is that the SJW crowd, uh, in regards to comic creators, they're like, don't buy my books, don't buy my books, you know, fuck, you know, fuck the audience, fuck them, fuck all of you, fuck this, that, and the other thing, fuck, you know, yeah. they, they're pushing fans away, where Ethan is pretty much, hey, how you guys doing, motherfuckers, come here, come here, I want to show you some shit, right? <laughs> yeah, and he's, like, talking to, uh, comic, I think, 
comic historian has done a video, like a collab video with Ethan. Uh, so Ethan's also done collab videos with uh, talks with uh, diversity in the comics. You know, I mean, he's getting his, himself out there. Yeah. And the SJW crowd that is a lot of the creators don't, I guess, don't like that. Yeah. Because he, he's like getting, you know, getting the, the, you know, talking about the business and what you should be doing. And part of it is like, you should be promoting your books because you, when you do so, you have that chance to earn more money and earning more money is good in creating your own character. Like I think one video I saw was from him and he was saying how it was in essence titled how to earn money in the comic book business. And he's like, this is how it works. It's like, when you go in and you're an artist, you're paid, um, not only are you paid so much per page, uh, but if that issue does, and I'm just going to, I forgot the number he said, so I'm going to say, uh, um, put out a number. If it hits 10,000 issues, every issue beyond that, you get royalty. Yeah. And if you get, if you create your own character, period, brand new, and it's able to make money, you make even more money and get more royalties because of merch, merchandising and, uh, you know, it, stuff being on T-shirts, mugs, uh, especially if there's a movie or TV deal, right. uh, and that character, even their uh, alter ego uh, or their everyday ego, you're getting money off of it. You're getting, you're, you're earning money. So this is what you got to do. You got to promote your stuff, get your, you know, stuff out there, yeah. especially graphic novels, because that you get even more money from that. Right. And I guess the SJW crowd don't like him, you know, saying, hey, you got to put yourself out there. You got to promote your stuff. You got to tell people, hey, read, and you have to put out quality stuff. They don't like that. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. The, no. The capitalism is bad. We should, we, the, the government should hand them out for free in a communist society. But, it, it, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it sucks because like I've been watching his um, he does that web series where like he actually shows you how to draw. Have you seen that? I I think I've seen something in regards to that. Actually, it's it, he's like he's got that temperament like Bob Ross, you know, where he's just kind of like eh, just whatever happens, and you do it here. <laughs> you know? and I think he was dr- drawing it's like oh. Uh, uh, I'm just going to leave that there. Don't worry about that. And he's just drawing something. I'm just going to, you know. Yeah. But uh, speaking of Bob Ross, I remember when they first put Bob Ross on, uh, uh, like, not Twitter, uh, Twitch. Yeah. And it, it just, like, it blew up Twitch. <laughs> because people were, they, uh, Twitch was like, it's Bob Ross's birthday. Let's put his videos on, you know, on Twitch, you know, just for shits and giggles. It's his birthday. Why not? Why the fuck not? And it gained a following that people were losing their shit in a good way. Dude, like nobody can watch Bob Ross and not just fall in love. <laughs> because it, Bob Ross would make a mistake, and he'd be like, "Oh, we're going to, you know, knowing Bob Ross, we're just going to we're, we're going to make it into a bush or yeah, like, a mountain. Like, we're and, mistakes. We just have happy little acts. Yeah, happy little acts <laughs> and." People, they like in in the aspect of uh, the the stream will go. Oh my God, he wrecked! Oh my God, it's going to be be a shit. All of a sudden, happy act. Like, oh my God, he corrected it. Oh my God, and the people <laughs> were losing their shit in chat. And, you know, you know, in the most popular way, it's like they they could their minds were blown. I you know, up, now I need to look up Bob Ross like reactions on like YouTube or something. <laughs> I'm sure these like millennials are like, oh what the <laughs> <laughs> But uh one uh, kind of touch back with Awesome Con a little bit. One of the people that uh is a recent addition and I've kinda made a passing remark in regards to it is uh Black Lightning. Okay. Uh Cress Williams is going to be at Awesome Con that's this cool. year. That's that's cool. Uh, I so, if we get our press pass, awesome con. If you're listening, we want our press pass. Um, 
Do it. I will put in for Cress Williams to interview him about Black Lightning, especially if about April, March, April, they're telling people that net, in regards to upcoming seasons, if they've been renewed or not. Right. And if they renew Black Lightning for a season two, it would be a perfect thing to talk to him about. Oh, for sure. And everything else. So it, I, I might have lost uh, Karen, but I've gained... <laughs> Black Lightning. <laughs> you, you speak like it's a personal loss. I may have lost you, Karen Gillen. I might have lost you, Karen. Well, she is a redhead. Uh, <laughs> but instead, I've gained this black man. <laughs> <laughs> it, that sounded as wrong as it does funny. <laughs> I might have black. lost this redheaded bitch, but I gained me a black man. <laughs> That's just black. as cool. <laughs> You don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so another, I guess the one thing or final thing, however you want to end this. Well, actually, I got a couple things. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I recently sent oh. you a link to some videos. Do you follow what I'm what talking is this? about? When? Uh, last night. Through when? Messenger? Uh, yeah. Well, I sent you a page from Facebook. Bigfoot? Oh, that. What do you think? That. <laughs> um, he said, oh, I didn't... that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was looking, I was like early this morning. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, I, I just read I'm like, oh, yeah, that's going to be a fucking hoax. Uh, give it a month. It's <laughs> yeah. so, like I didn't have to look at the videos. It's like, ah, oh, that's going to be uh, a hoax within a month. Oh, you didn't actually look at the videos? <laughs> No, no, no. It was just like I looked at it. It was like I was half asleep at the time because oh. I was like been going to bed at like three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. It's just like, uh, what? Uh, uh, Big Candy sent me a link. What? Oh, they found Bigfoot's feet. Oh, right. Okay, that's gonna be about a Hulk in about a month. Oh, you didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you gotta watch it though. It's so funny. No, what it is is the guy. <laughs> the reason I wanted you to see because it's 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 coast to coast funny. <laughs> Coast to coast funny. So, (laughs) the guy's father killed this Bigfoot in, like, 1956. And they cut it up and put it in the family's chest freezer. (laughs) And he's had... So he's been in the freezer. Yeah, he's had a chest freezer full of Bigfoot parts since 1956. (laughs) And he's coming out now. I guess. Now, (laughs) and you're wondering why my first response without actually seeing the fucking video, (laughs) it's going to be a hoax within about a month. (laughs) You got to watch it because it's like talking about the feet. It's like they're just like they did. I don't know what they did, but they did everything they could do to like have meat and like sinew. And it looks like, you know, like they did. I don't know. I don't know who cuts it, stuff like that, but yeah, they, it looks like they cut it with a, like a freaking hacksaw or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty funny. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess this is the the newest one for this year. You know, there's about one or two every year. Yeah, Somebody you get comes forth like with, with a big. Clip. If they if, if there's a. A skip in it. There's like either once a year, twice a year, or t- once every other year, something like that. You know, something comes out yeah. in regards to it. Uh, There's been a lot of Bigfoot stuff recently, though. I don't know if you've seen. They had a. What was the other thing I saw uh, fairly recently? Was oh jeez, what was it? There was some. It, I think it was on Netflix. It was like called Discovering Bigfoot. I don't know if you. Uh, I think I might have seen that in passing. I know I have. <laughs> I have yet to watch it. It's on my watch later y- list for uh, my personal YouTube account. Yeah. Uh, it, it's titled uh, Bigfoot Raped Me and Used Me as a Sex Slave. <laughs> okay. And I, I was like, and the guy had this like, pitiful fa- look on his face. I'm like, <laughs> I, so I, I, I've been debating whether or not to watch this video. <laughs> That it's going to be either the saddest thing ever, or the cringiest thing ever, or the funniest thing ever, or somehow a combination thereof. I'm like, 
oh, I want to watch this, but oh, uh, no, the no. The only quality <laughs> Bigfoot like, thing that has come out, in my opinion, in the last like five, ten years is the Bobcat Goldthwait movie. I, I got to watch Have that. Have you seen that one? Or, no, like, no, no. Something creepy. I, I can't remember, but like that it was pretty good. Like it was basically about these Bigfoots that were like actually brutal and aggressive and they end up killing this couple. But um the, the discovering Bigfoot was so bad. I mean so bad. It was like this guy just walking around the woods, like like okay. Let's put it this way. There are people that are comfortable in the woods and there's people that are like scared to death of the woods. I fall in the latter <laughs> latter <laughs> category very much so. Um, last year, I went swimming with some friends, and my car. I actually got kind of in an accident, and my car was sitting in the middle of the mountains of West Virginia, near one of their parks. Um, and I don't mean like a city park. I mean like one of those big wilderness parks. <laughs> Mm-hmm. On the side of the road, in the woods, for like eight hours. <laughs> okay, I had my son with me, and there's nobody for miles. My phone didn't have service. Uh, and let me guess, the only thing you could think of was nanny, 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 uh, nanny. You No, know, I was more scared of getting killed by a bear. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I was like freaking out every possible noise. I it was too hot to sit in the car. And the car, like the battery had died because I had the air, air condition on trying to keep my son comfortable. And the air condition died and I had to like put the windows down to keep him from like sweating to death. You know, he's, I basically put him to bed. I was like, all right, go to sleep because daddy's trying to figure this out. You know, we, we were supposed to have a record coming because our friend had came, you know, we came up there with saw what happened and he went and got help. Basically when he had, he had to travel. 45 minutes to the nearest place where he could actually have service on his phone. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're waiting for several hours for a record service to come actually help us, you know, and I'm thinking we're going to get mauled to death by a bear. I do not want to be in the woods at night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Especially unprepared. That's, that's one thing. Uh, two, this guy was way too calm. Like, you're saying that there is eight foot tall gorilla beasts in the woods, not ten feet from you, fifteen feet from you, and you're just like, "Hey there, big fella." No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Even even if uh, uh, you know if it might not be that, and it might be a bear, I would be scared to death. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and the thing is, um, I remember. Um... Roy telling us, like, he was watching one of these reality shows, like, searching for Bigfoot or something like that yeah. on, like, A&E or Discovery Channel. He said many years ago, he's like, he was just watching it for shits and giggles, you know, the background noise. And he said, uh, he remembers one of, it's a running joke between me and him, is that he said, the guy was like, yeah, you got to call out the big feet, just like this. And he said, the guy turned and cupped his hands over the mouth and was like, come on out, you hairy bastard. <laughs> I just thought they're like, yeah, they like to knock, so uh, <laughs> we get a stick and we just knock on the trees, <laughs> or they like to go yippee yo, <laughs> just like what, what? <laughs> you know this for a fact. That's what these things <laughs> sound like. Okay, so, but yeah, it, <laughs> he had this thing where there was like apples on a log and like. There was supposedly, like, something taking the apples, and the video just conveniently, like, he walks in front of the camera when there's an apple there, and then when he walks past and, like, doesn't show it, then there's no apple. Ooh! <laughs> like magic. It's like, are you are you trying to fool a five-year-old, or are we actually filming a documentary here? Because, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was bad. <laughs> I've seen some stinkers. I mean, that one Finding Bigfoot, that series that used to be on, I think, the History Channel or whatever. Yeah, that's. I think that was the one that uh, Lord was talking yeah, about, that, like Finding Bigfoot. That was bad enough. That was bad enough. This one's worse. <laughs> that was like just, like, basically, if you want to waste 
like an hour of your life watching like grown men walk around in the woods yelling at trees. That's that's the show for you. Hey, wait a minute. I I, I tend to do that while watching Mo Sarge and Oh My Gosh, but it's a lot more entertaining. <laughs> but uh, I, and I'm not I'm not dissing uh, Oh My Gosh or uh, uh, Mo Sarge, but it because it it has that little bit of a entertainment value to it because they do uh, urban exploring and haunted. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, it's so, at least interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like, right? These guys are trying to fool people like into believing something. It's like what kills me is they they say they're experts but they have no proof you know i mean if they, if they had some kind of proof something or something that you know it's like um, tangible let me put it like this in regards to granted there are in all aspects of the paranormal i think we've talked about this many years ago when we did our paranormal show mm-hmm. or the few episodes that do cover on the paranormal that there are a lot of people that do fakes right that in regards to stuff, I'll, I'll put it like this. When it comes to uh, UFOs and the possible of hauntings, right. uh, because I'm a skeptic, uh, I'm more of a believer in UFOs than I am ghosts and hauntings. Right. There are probably more stuff that when it comes to UFOs, even though there's probably even more fakery with regards to uh, modern day filming and effects being easily accessed by everybody mm-hmm. in regards to UFOs and uh, hauntings, but there's probably a good en- amount of stuff that can be honestly uh, unexplained right. or, you know, something along those lines that it could, you know, there are probably, but meaning I should say this. That when it comes to UFOs, there's probably, honest to God, truer aspects of stuff that we cannot explain. Right. Same thing with hauntings. But everything that has come out with Bigfoot, almost 99.9999999999% has been hoaxes. Right. Yeah. Well, it's willingfully doing hoaxes. People, like, wanting to fool people. Like, okay, so in the case of, like, UFOs. There's two dedicated channels I I watch on YouTube. There is UFO Seekers, which is like a no-nonsense guy who actually just films the sky uh, over certain places and doesn't do a lot of commentary. He just looks for things that he can't explain. So that's a good one. The other one I watch, uh, and you watch too, is Secure Team 10. He's a a normal guy who's interested in UFO subject, um, and he just reports things that people report to him. Uh, He doesn't claim to be an expert. He doesn't claim to be anything other than someone who just reports. And gives commentary on what he gets. Right. So what the difference is between those two channels and everything collected from the Bigfoot people is somewhere – there's tangible evidence of unexplained phenomenon on the UFO front. Like there are things that they show daily that either they can't explain or someone else can't explain. And there's photo or video proof, right? Or evidence otherwise. Right. With the Bigfoot thing, you rarely ever see anything that isn't a hoax. Like you're saying that right. isn't it's flat like everything out that hoax. comes out. Right. It's like if it hits mainstream media, uh, something that's, uh, let's say, a light in the sky that cannot be explained, which is, by true definition, a UFO, and it hits mainstream media, it comes out in mainstream media like the Phoenix Lights, yeah. uh, that it's unexplained, no one really knows about it, and so forth and so on, or it's seen it on the uh, ISS, uh, which is the International Space Station footage, live stream, that people can't explain uh and therefore while we can't explain it we caught this therefore it could be evidence of something uh extraterrestrial so and when it comes to bigfoot nothing has come out where it's either a a guy in a suit or a gal in a suit uh faked hair or a, a, a near facsimile suit stuffed with a uh, uh, possum meat right. and everything else yeah. It's all been, everything that's come out mainstream has been a hoax. I mean, even, let's put it this way. When you, 
when when there's dead bodies that they find, and it's been years, you know, years, they'll find like some teeth, and they'll go, okay, well, there's a dental record, you know, uh, we can find out even if they don't know who it is, they know that it was a male. He was, you know, th- weighed approximately this much, uh, was this old. You know, you, there's forensics. There has been no forensic evidence that pointed towards the existence of Bigfoot since ever, <laughs> you know? Right. It, it's almost like if these creatures exist, they die and they melt into the forest, never to be found, <laughs> you know? No one's ever found one dead on the side of the road like it had a heart attack and just died right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's been nothing. Nothing at all. Like, people claim to have heard this stuff. And I still say it, they're, they're seeing a bear standing up. There's there's no way. <laughs> that, that, you know. or, 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 or the aspect is dead on the side of the road. It's like, we have all the, where Bigfoot possibly are, or the equivalent of Bigfoot yeah. here in the States, is yeah. like Pennsylvania, uh, Washington, Oregon, uh it's like when you have these desolate parts of uh, Pennsylvania, Maine, uh, Oregon, Washington, Northern California, that people hit deer and bear all the fucking time. All the, time. All the goddamn time. Possum, raccoon, uh, deer, wolves, uh, maybe bison or two. You'd probably do more damage to your car than the fucking bison. <laughs> but... Uh, you know what I'm saying. Well, I, could, I, but, well, I know, for instance, I, I'll give you a really good for instance. So a number of years back, I met a girl online. This is really pathetic. And <laughs> I, she was from Norfolk area, and I'd never been down there. And I, I had just started driving. And I said, okay, well, I'll come meet you, okay? So I drive down there. And I took 17 the entire way, which is all rural. Uh, I, I could have took 95. You know, 95 goes right down there in a couple of exits. But I took, I, I took the scenic route, which was driving all the way down uh, Route 7. I want to say it's 17. Yeah, 17. And um, the entire length of Virginia is like <laughs> – just corpses of animals everywhere. There, I mean, I literally saw anything you can think of that was dead or dying. I saw dead deer, dead bear, dead cow, dead, you know, raccoon, dead snakes. I saw dead, every, like, chickens. I saw dead chickens on the side of the road. <laughs> but no dead Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> No dick. I think that's part of my point. I saw the the cow was really interesting because I, I think a semi truck had hit it and it knocked its head off. <laughs> there was a headless cow corpse. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty interesting. But um, yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, when I see stuff like that, it just it makes me laugh. It makes me think like, who who are you trying to fool? Number one, and like two, like. How do you think you're going to get away with it? Because the second somebody does a hair sample on that thing, if they would actually get to that point, they're going to say it's, it's this is bear fur, you know, or this is like some other some other kind of fur. Kind of like what they did a few a uh, few years ago with uh, uh, on coast coast when I think we were at least I was actively listening mm-hmm. to it. They, they someone claimed, oh, we we've had this uh, frozen. Bigfoot body, and they kind of found out. Oh yeah, it was possum meat and raccoon meat stuffed in a bear, like this realistic uh, costume that somebody <laughs> made. And you know, it's just you know something that sort of thing. It was a Bigfoot turducken. Yeah, <laughs> and they claimed, oh, uh, they pro- the, when they were called down on it, they tried to pass it off. Oh, it probably ate the possum and raccoon. That's why you have it. Oh uh, no, it's you yeah, know, it's it's. It's meat. It was near the skin. It's what you gave us. Right. It wasn't stomach contents. Right. You gave us meat that was actual meat. Uh, well, uh, 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 then about a month and a half later, oh, it came out that it was a yeah. hoax. So, and to kind of uh, go into something a little bit geeky, because it kind of 
uh, came out earlier today, and there's one, after that, one quick question uh, I would have to ask you, uh, but uh, that is, the news came out today is that, uh, uh, I should say earlier today as of this recording, is that Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be delayed again to uh, later this year, probably uh, end of October to probably closer to Christmas sometime due to more polishing. This is the second time it's been pushed back. It was supposed to come out March this year. Uh, I was probably going to be picking it up some way, shape, or form this year. Uh, I liked the first one. I loved the first one. I'm not a big rock star fan, but I enjoyed uh, the first Red Dead. Um, I want to see it. I want to play it. But if they keep pushing it back, it might become another, like, Duke Nukem or something like that. But I'm not saying it will. Uh, Rockstar has put out a lot of good shit, but it, it, people are going to get pissed about it. Yeah. People are. Well, they, I, what what more do they have to polish? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't. They, they, I guess they're trying to make it more uh, PS4 and uh, Xbox One S and uh, uh, One X. You know, the ultra high def stuff. So. It, could be player in a higher resolution and tweaking it, make sure everything's right. But the thing is, if there's people like you and I that don't have a ultra high def yeah. TV, you're not going to notice. You're pandering to like or, what three percent of your audience? Come on. <laughs> um, if more people had the ultra high def TVs, then yeah. yeah. Uh, granted, ultra high def TVs are coming down in price, yeah. but. Uh, there, there's to this but point, there's still, to this day, it's like... There's still just a novelty, really. I mean, like... Right. I mean, if you own but, a flat-screen TV, and you've watched a movie in the last, I don't know, three, four years, I don't know about how, how much higher quality you can get without it looking ridiculous. I've seen... I've looked at a couple of TVs that, uh, when everything was kind of coming out... Uh, they've had a, like Walmart would have and Best Buy would have stuff out that, all right, this TV is a, uh, 720, uh, TV or they like right now you can walk into Best Buy and see they have their, uh, 1080p TVs right next to an ultra high def TV. Yeah. Uh, other than maybe a tad bit brighter, I don't notice a color. Well, difference. here's the thing. And you got to understand all those TVs in there, except for the one that's ultra high def are on the same signal. So they're breaking up that signal over the course of like 24 TVs, 25 TVs that are on display. That signal is being split. Okay. It's not like a single signal that's going into one TV. So no matter how you tweak it, it, it you're going to get just a regular quality picture. Okay. The best it can do. And it's not bad, but it's the best it can do. At home, it'll be a little bit higher quality because it's a single source. Notice the HD TV that they have on display is not showing the same thing that any of the other TVs in the in the place are showing. It's showing uh, its own content because it's uh, <laughs> it's HD content on an HD TV with an HD drive. So, like. You're going to get the almost 3D quality, like, oh, my God, I'm flying through this landscape picture uh, because it's tweaked, completely tweaked out. Um, you know, you can get extremely good quality out of your regular flat screen TV, but I don't know if you notice this. I notice it really bad that if I don't have it like the quality kind of toned down, that everything I watch kind of looks like a soap opera. <laughs> Kind of, and sorta. I can't watch that. I can't stand it. I have to actually like turn the, I think it's the refresh rate or something down, because, <laughs> like, I, I remember when we first got our TV before I adjusted it, like we were watching a movie and it looked like somebody shot it with a video camera, and I was like, ah, I can't watch this. <laughs> it looked, it looked, it looked like poor quality. You know what I mean? But it was just because the age, the high def was on, like, so high def you could, like, you know, see everything. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Can't watch that. And the other thing, the thing I kind of wanted to uh, ask you is, did you catch uh, 
the rumble at all? No, did not. Was, well, I got no. I know yeah. the results because I watched the you know the results, but I don't have WWE Network anymore, so I haven't. Yeah, yeah. I wish I did. <laughs> I heard it was <laughs> good. I I, I like the. Uh... The, it ha, as I was telling a few people, I think I mentioned it on last week's episode. The even though the women's it was the first uh, women's Royal Rumble, they kind of followed file uh, followed the same formula that they did with the men's. Right. Meaning, uh, you know how in previous Rumbles they would bring somebody like Hacksaw Jim Duggan or you know it, it, it's just a throwaway person. I'm not knocking Hacksaw Jim Duggan at all. Right. Just that they'll have somebody in for the fans that they remember or, you know, as a one-time throwaway person. Uh, or they'll bring somebody in that they want to see if there's a big reaction right. for. Uh, that's what they kind of did with the – it's like we're, we're, applying the, we're using the same formula, but instead of guys, we're using gals. Right. Uh, it, it was – I did see Trish Stratus. Yeah, and Beth Phoenix came right, back. Right, I saw that. And I, that was like, oh, my God. Uh, you know, first Vic, Vicky Guerrero came back and was like, oh, dear God, <laughs> no. But I, but I understood why. It was like once they said uh, uh, Vicky Guerrero and she came out, and it was like, oh, they're kind of following the same formula as they do with the guys. And I and it was like, that's what made me say, hey, that, that's a pleasant surprise, even though it's Vicky fucking Guerrero, but still <laughs> – um, uh, as a kind of an independent observer, you know, it was w- seeing the formula. I was like, "Hey, I understand what they're doing and what they're trying to do." And it, right now, it looks like they're they're it's working. Yeah. And they uh, uh, with um, I want to say what's her name, Sasha Banks, uh-huh. is the uh, one wrestler that she was in it for uh, about a. Let me bring up my notes uh, from last week. Uh, eh, no, that's good fun stuff. <laughs> Shit. Uh, there it is. Okay. My notebook for my notes that I have to write down is kind of like a a, a choose your own adventure book. <laughs> uh, <let's see. laughs> really, I have like last week's in uh, in front of stuff from two years ago and. Uh, let's see here, women, women, women. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Sasha Banks. Uh, she last uh, lasted the longest, at like fifty three minutes and change. Oh. Uh, considering you know, with the guys, it was uh, Rey Mysterio at sixty some odd. It's a fifty three minutes is not just a high bar. It's a, kind of a uh, achievable uh, record to beat, right. if you can understand that. And I, I was telling somebody at work who's a big WWE fan that. You have to figure, if they continue the Women's Royal Rumble, that every woman in it, all 30, from Sasha Banks to Beth Phoenix and the people that came after Beth, were all record holders right then and there, no matter what. Just by showing up and entering in the ring, yeah, they were record holders because it's the first one. Yep. No, and it was uh, you know apparently it was uh, it was really good and apparently like you know everybody was you know putting each other over and it was like exciting and like you know I don't know. Uh, it, Sasha Banks kind of did the the higher uh, what I know one of them was uh, uh, kind of one of the higher flyers yeah. when she tossed out she landed on the people that were there the gals that were outside right. the ring and where she finally ended up was on the. Uh, the the bar where the people right between the bar yeah. and the audience and she didn't pull what we saw in uh back when we watched it at my old uh, place in Inwood. Kofi. Uh you know not Kofi, not Kofi. Uh, uh it was uh uh what's his name? Uh he jumped from the, the uh pretty much the barrier to the ring. No, wasn't that Kofi Kingston? No, I don't think it was. Black guy, right? I think Kofi uh, Kofi did something similar. He did something like two years in a row. One year, he did something where he jumped from the bar into the ring, and then one year, he did um, when he went out, he got thrown over the over the uh, ring post, but when he landed, 
He he planted his feet on the stairs and got up. And like so he was and that was crazy because that's a hell of a landing. <laughs> but uh But uh, we'll get into Kofi in a second, but what she did was she uh tight roped that barrier to the uh one of the chairs, the rolling right. chairs. And she sat in the chair kind of with her feet um beneath her. Yeah. And because as the rules state that if your feet touch the ground you're right. out, she used her hands to walk the chair to the steps, the ring steps. Right. And she uh, pushed the chair away simultaneously putting her knees on the steps and because her feet were not on the floor, they were on the steps, right. she was still classified as okay. in. But within about, not even 10 seconds later of getting back into the ring, she was tossed out and disqualified. Right, right. But the uh, with Kofi's being in the match, as I said last week, it's like, wait a minute, uh, I kind of discluded him because he's still an active member of the WWE, unlike someone like Rey Mysterio, who hasn't been in it for a while, and maybe John Cena, who is back uh, kind of part-time and all that, uh, which, with no dis- disrespect to Kofi. We're talking about a, a, a wrestler when he first got into the WWE, from what I remember, is like he was like, when he was mentioned that he, uh, they asked him about being in the game, the, I think back in the day when he first appeared, he was le- legitimately excited that he was in a video game <laughs> and had an action figure. Yeah. <laughs> he thought it was the coolest shit ever. You know that you know that says something about somebody's character. Like I'm an action figure, motherfucker. <laughs> uh, I'm in a video game. My dreams are true. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it, for him seeing that, it's like you know, God bless his heart. You know, why why can't you fucking say? It's like. He achieved everything anybody could want in life. It's like, I'm a wrestler now. I got an action figure and I'm in a video game. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I got to play with myself legitimately and I go blind. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the corny get up was uh, when he first got over the rope uh, because he's in the the triple man tag team. They put uh, uh, a plate of... Uh, they, he landed on one of his uh, tag team partners. Right. And... Because if he stepped, he, there was no way for him to uh, launch himself back up onto the ring. They put up down a plate of uh, pancakes, ah. which was, to me, kind of stupid. But, you know, it, he put one foot on the pancakes, <laughs> then hopped onto one foot. It was so, in essence, he was hopping around the ring on one foot <laughs> till he got to the stairs, yeah. which kept him qualified because both feet have to be touching the floor. Uh, but again, once he got back into the ring about 10, 15 seconds later, he got tossed out. Right. But I, I, That's funny. it was one of those things that, uh, when I went, this was prior to that, this was that this past Saturday, um, I was speaking to a buddy of mine in town. He's like, yeah, I, I had that. I kind of want to believe him that he was going to get tickets to this event. But uh, part of me wants to believe him, and part of me doesn't want to believe him that he was going to get tickets. One of those type of aspects mm-hmm. um, that he said he was going to get tickets, uh, with, uh, and him and his buddy were going to go to, to Philly to watch it live, yeah. front row, ringside. No. Uh, two grand a piece. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, uh, no. I said, dude. If that was, I told him flat, I was like, dude, if you were getting tickets, I would have, dude, I would have paid gas money, at least. Like, the funny thing about, like, getting tickets like that, like, what was that I read? Something like they put you on a list. Like, you can sign up. Like, when you're in line, you can, like, they'll pull you out of line and say, hey, like, you know, two tickets became available in the front. Like, because they can't have empty seats in the front because it would look bad. And, like, somehow, right. like, if when you're standing in line, you get, like, you can get randomly picked, but you have to pay up. <laughs> like, if you get picked, you got to pay what those seats are worth. And, like, somebody said those things were expensive, like five, six hundred dollars a pop just for, like, you know, raw and shit like that. But for pay-per-views, it seemed worse. But Yeah, the thing, like, like I said, it, was one, it would be one of those things that if, if it was true, and it's like, dude, 
if you pay for the tickets, I would have pay, help pay for gas. Course, yeah. You know, um, I said it, if we got back early Monday after having and going to any after party ringside, I would have I would have brought a sign. Uh, I would have you know went back inside and said, "Where's the you know poster board?" And a big mark with a big sign. You would have seen me ringside. Listen to the Long Coat Mafia podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, ringside, big sign. Uh, um, but well, the one cool thing that I liked about it, was- I, it would have been one of the few times, or the only few times that it would have the episode would have came out. It would still come out on Monday. <laughs> Way late, <here. laughs> Way late. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> the one thing I liked about it was that uh, that Ronda Rousey is finally going to be a part of WWE. I was wondering when it was going to happen, and she came out and did her whole thing at the end of the thing. And uh, the cool thing was, I didn't know this, but the jacket she had on was actually uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, actual jacket. His son Colin actually came all the way up from somewhere in Florida or something like that and like hand delivered it to her to wear on that night. So she has the family's blessing as far as that goes. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it, she word has it because when she was in the height of, I wouldn't say the height of her uh uh UFC career, mm-hmm. uh she, people were calling her uh in essence uh rowdy yeah. And she wanted, she liked it, and because she was, I guess, a fan. From what she said, a fan of wrestling, she went to the Piper family when Rowdy uh, Piper was still alive and asked for his permission to use right. it. And he gave, in essence, gave the blessing, you know, because she wanted to use it and was like, "Can I use it, please?" And was polite about right. it, and I guess she became friends with the family, and that's why I guess. Uh, the son did this, yeah. and we'll, we'll see how it goes. And that's why, uh, from what someone was telling me, uh, Azuka didn't do uh, choose which uh, champ female champion to challenge because they wanted uh, to see where what to do with Ronda, which way she wanted to right. go. It's probably going to be a fatal four so, way, if anything. <clears throat> so who knows? Oh, but I know this, like, I, the, like she's she's gonna get a second win in the WWE. I just the thing is, I'm already starting to see people like poo pooing on her, and I don't understand like why because she did a lot for UFC and a lot for women in sports and stuff. And for people to like down her, I still don't understand it. Yeah, she lost two of her last fights, but it was like it was bound to happen. Like you know, people do lose fights every once in a while. You know, <laughs> it does. It does right, happen. And not to mention, <laughs> I think we stated a, uh, a couple of times that with Ronda Rousey, it's in a sport like the UFC and MMA, and uh, as a whole, it, it's not something that, like boxing, where someone like maybe let's take like Sugar Ray Leonard could come back every maybe once a year, do a quick bout, yeah. and leave right. uh it, it's ever changing you have new talent new ways yeah. of fighting you can't have the same style all the time well people uh, were like especially with a fresh people group. were like oh well she came in there she was always like yeah i'm gonna win i ain't gonna lose i'm like well what do you expect somebody be like well yeah i'm going into this fight i might win i don't know maybe not would you want to support somebody that acted like that no you you have to think you're the best you know no matter what you have to you have to talk the talk. You have to talk. Yeah, you might not be able to walk right. the walk, but at least you have the smack right. talk. You gotta you gotta try to do the the uh, the psych out. Unless you're you have unless to. you're Rose Nam- uh, Nama Yunus, <laughs> then you just stare blankly at your opponent while they do all the shit talking and then knock them the fuck out. Have you seen that girl? Oh no. Check her out. L- look up online. Look up Thug Rose. She's a little sweetheart. She's like cute as a button, uh, but she's got like she shaved her hair off because it got in the way of uh, when she was practicing. <laughs> but um, <laughs> look up. Talk about sa- I, I know I'm probably using the term wrong, but talk about savage. It's in the way. <laughs> it's what in the way. Do? It Shave off. it off. Like, you know, she, she's real cool like that. She's like real down to earth and stuff. But what kills me about her is um, like the girl Joanna that she was like going up against. 
in this last match. I think I want to say it was UFC 217. Anyway, this girl kept getting in her face, like all the press conferences, yelling at her, like screaming at her, putting her hand on her, putting her hand in her face and stuff. And the whole time she she's just staring at her. Didn't say a word. Didn't, didn't give her nothing. The entire time just ghosted her, gave her nothing. And then when it come time, you know, to fight, you know, this girl's like super confident, overconfident, whatever. And then she turns out to beat her ass. <laughs> like she punched her so hard she tapped out. <laughs> and I, you're talking about straw weight. So this is a little, little tiny girl, 125 or 145 pounds. Just beat the shit out of this other girl. <laughs> so I don't know. She's 125 pounds. I think 119 is her fighting weight. So, you know, just this little girl, but like, yeah, she's, she's, she's pretty cool. Thug Rose, look her up. Okay, let's see. She's the, she's the next thing, I think. Thug. Thug is in. Rose. Thuggin. <laughs> oh, uh, there's one here. It's two, UFC 2017, uh, Rose Otagon interview with her shaved head. And she's on, uh, oh, oh she was on Joe Rogan. Yeah, she too. was on Joe Rogan last week. So that's a good interview if you, you want know, to get acquainted with her. You can, uh, listen. Uh, so I'll, I'll add it to watch her uh, Joe Rogan thing. Uh, I put it on a um, watch later, so I'll catch it either after the show or sometime during yeah. the week. So, and that's, I think that's about, wait a minute, that's, ooh, uh, that's about, oh, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it on air in reference to, nah, we'll save it for next time. It, I want to look into it a little okay. bit more um, because it's about all that, you know, uh, app that's able to, in essence, uh, make fake videos using celebrities. Oh, like this. yeah. But uh, I, part of me wants to talk about it and part of me doesn't. So I want to look into it more and think yeah. about it. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, something that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go on. Um, so a, a little while ago, you did a challenge where you did a piece of gum from a 1980s uh, wrapper um, of uh, the uh -oh. freaky Fright Flicks whatever cards or whatever. So I was going through my stuff the other day, just kind of like – you know, some sports stuff, because I'm getting rid of a lot of my baseball cards this weekend. Uh, and I come across a bottle of Coca-Cola from 1995. Oh, this shit. bottle is 23 years old. <laughs> I'm thinking challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 do we say? <laughs> I'm <Okay>. down. <laughs> I'm down. So, I still got to put the uh uh I have it on our uh, uh GoPro wannabe yeah. uh the, in regards to uh I know I I've been promising I got to put up the uh, Mountain Dew rant for YouTube. Oh, yeah. uh, I have the footage for uh I think last year it's like if we get hit over 16 uh 1,100 total listens by the end of the year. I'll do a uh, polar bear challenge. I kind of did that. I want to review uh, – folks, I still want to review the footage and see how cringy it is. <laughs> if, it's not that, if it's not that cringy, uh, I'll put it up. Uh, but I did record something. Uh, I wanted to have some sort of snow on the ground so you guys knew that it was cold outside and I wasn't trying to mm -hmm. fake it uh, during this, like, the 60-degree weather. You know? <laughs> so – and saying it was cold, but yeah. uh, now that I kind of have, uh, I won't say better headphones yeah. on, uh, just that I think the earbuds that I was listening through were starting to go, and it made it sound like it was uh, uh, mono, oh. that it, it recorded mono instead of stereo. Yeah. Uh, now that I ha found a, what I have is, uh, you're familiar with the store five yeah. and below? Uh, basically, they have a pair of headphones that you could right. buy. And the wire that connects from to the uh, headphone jack to the headphones is pretty much an auxiliary oh. wire, which means you could literally disconnect it from the headphones themselves and replace that wire once the wire goes oh, okay. bad. It cost me five dollars, and considering you could get the cords for like two or three dollars in some mm -hmm. cases, 
it saves me a bunch of money when the wires yeah, go bad. But uh, I want to double check with these uh, 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 headphones now that I'm wearing for the show uh, because of making sure I could hear both both things or just one ear. Um, if anything, I'll put it to some sort of music, if not a royalty-free yeah. music. That way I, I can't be uh, copyright claimed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. So, yeah, I, I found that and I was like, oh, we got to do something with this. So, <laughs> thank you. So I have some, some stuff to put and it, it, it's It's not like we can fake it either because that, that thing has, uh, it's still sealed. And it says 1995 right on the bottle because it was like a commemorative bottle of uh, Cal Ripken Jr. Like when he broke that record, that streak. It was a yeah. commemorative for that. <laughs> so <laughs> this thing is old. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. We'll see that because you, you were talking about drinking soda last week. I was like, there, there's a rare soda for you. It's eight. The, the, this could be like, oh my god, this is going to right. Hurt. <laughs> uh, also, speaking of rare soda, you were talking about all the different kinds of Mountain Dew. Have you seen? There's something at Walmart the other day, Mountain Dew Dark. I think I heard about that. Yeah, or I was gonna it. pick up a can for you, like when I go to the store tomorrow, and like next time I come up there and we actually do a show like live in person, I'll I'll have you taste test that on the air because <clears throat> I I just thought it was interesting. I think it's like extra caffeine or some shit. I think it's like an energy drink or something. Yeah, it, yeah. Watch me go into high. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, like there's like around here, we get a lot of the weirdo flavors. Like if you go to like Target, like they always have like the weirdo flavors of everything, and like Walmart usually has some, and like the little convenience stores always has weird ones. Yeah, it's just Martinsburg. It's like fuck. <laughs> yeah, Martinsburg's like you don't need weird stuff. You're weird enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think. <laughs> Um, if, uh, Big Candy kind of agrees, uh, we could call it for an episode right now. It's been about two hours and change. So, um, any, any final thoughts from you? Oh, no, I just wanted to get some, some things off my chest. That's why I hit you up and said, let's do an app. I didn't know if you had anything planned for, uh, for this weekend or not. So I just was glad. Uh, not really. Not really. It's just, always um, happy to come on and chit chat, you know. Right. Um, after that, nothing really, anything like that. Folks, I could save the, uh, if I don't tack it on to the end of this show, I'll save it for another time. It's the graphic novel reviews because they are uh, older issues, so, or actually older graphic novels, so I can do those anytime. So that's yeah. that. Uh, it's not like a lot of stuff that we, we get right now, like the Stan Lee story or stuff that has to come out right, right. now. Um we're going into month 11. Uh, uh, as of the end of February, it will be month 11. Then end of March will be one year since using original content. Oh, my God. It's tough, man. <laughs> it's tough. Uh, but uh, keep us going. You got uh, put all the last little bit tag stuff at the end uh, personally through the editing process on whenever that might be. So take care, folks. We'll see you next time. And... We're back, everybody. That's right. Uh, this is the tail end of the sh- episode, but we're going to do things a little bit differently right now because right now, as of this, the Super Bowl just happened, and we have a few up, at least one update. Uh, that in regard to uh, Stan Lee's health, he did uh, come out of the hospital like a day later, the next day. Uh, everything seemed fine, and he's up and about. He seems fine and dandy. We posted up on our Facebook page his own, from his own words how he's feeling and what happened. So uh, feel free to wander over to our Facebook page and dig around for that. It was posted up on, I think, Friday. The uh, It's the 5th as of this right now, or the 4th. So it had been Friday the 2nd, so go back and check on that. Uh, we, during the Super Bowl, uh, first off, congratulations to the Philadelphia Eagles, even though I'm a Giants fan. Uh, I didn't manage to catch the game. It was a hard-fought game between both 
the Eagles and the Patriots. Uh, both teams were very, very hungry and wanting that W, that win. And for those of you who got to see it, uh, you know the score. For those of you who didn't get a chance to see it, but uh, one of those score, the uh, the Eagles won it, forty-one to thirty-three. Uh, I mean, the Eagles really did their best at uh, on in this game, and it showed. They played their heart out. I think there might have been a few uh, mistakes on both sides, but nothing really major. So I mean, it was really, really good. And as I've been saying recently uh, over the past couple hours in regards to uh, watching the Super Bowl, special thanks go to Anthony's Pizza here in the Martinsburg area because uh, they let me hang out in their store for, even though they have a little bit of a dining area, but uh, they let me hang out in the store and watch pretty much the pre-show all the way up until the final, I think, two minutes. Uh, they had to close down because the final, instead of it ending at 10 o'clock, it ended maybe about five, ten minutes after 10. Uh, so it was like that last two minutes lasted 10 minutes. And I couldn't really stay along, stay in there for, you know, 10 minutes, a half hour, how long that final two minutes was going to take. So, uh, they had to close up, so I had to leave, but they, um, because somebody forgot their order or whatever, uh, they, like, well, we have these extra garlic, garlic knots and, uh, uh, two, uh, subs, uh, uh, I think they said it was, like, uh, chicken subs, you know, it was like, you want them? That they, they were ordered and in essence paid for, and they didn't come pick them up, so, you want them? I went, okay, and so... It's always nice when we're given free food. Uh, I'll say that. I am a fat boy, uh, for those of you who haven't seen me yet. Uh, so, free food is always nice. Uh, and a couple of things that were seen during the Super Bowl, one of which was the Han Solo uh, trailer, or the trailer for Solo, the Han... Uh, it was titled Solo, a Star Wars story, like uh, how Rogue One was titled Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, it looked... It didn't excite me. It, it looked nice. It looked pretty. But it was like, the meh. Uh, I, I probably will see it when it comes out. But it just had that meh see, feeling. But on social media, the initial reaction for that teaser uh, was both, Oh my God, I can't wait. And, Oh my God, what the fuck. So, uh, the trailer... The official trailer drops sometime Monday the 5th or sometime today as this premieres. And we'll probably share that initial trailer once it's released, when it's released. So we'll probably get a better consensus when that happens. Um, also, uh, the Marvel uh, Infinity War trailer ha dropped and it looked amazing. Uh, it I want to see how it ties in. They didn't give too much. They just showed, uh, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Thor. They showed uh, Iron Man. They showed Doctor Strange. The little bit of the battles, but they didn't show too much. And they even showed, like, Baby Groot. I don't know why they showed Baby Groot. Because in the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, uh, in one of the after credit scenes, Groot was more like a teenager. So, uh, we'll see how everything is in uh, Marvel Adventures. So, I mean, event, um, Avengers Infinity War. So, we'll see how that goes and how it feels. Uh, there was no... Uh, I, I kind of expected to... Even though I didn't hear anything about it, I kind of expected... A Ready Player One trailer or a um, uh, Marvel uh, Black Panther trailer. Uh, neither one was in there, but I think this was the major hype for Infinity War and um, Han Solo. And we did have a new trailer for Jurassic Park, uh, the new Jurassic Park uh, movie that's coming out. I do want to check that out. It was kind of interesting, but again, I want to check it out. Um, the trailers overall were kind of okay, but the one that really interested me more was the Marvel Avengers Infinity War trailer. Now, we did get, even though you heard us uh, talk about in the Skype call with between me and Candy about uh, 
the aspect of Cloverfield 3 and 4. Uh, 3 was supposed to take place in a, a space station, and 4 was kind of be, supposed to be like a time travel type of uh, thing. It was supposed to be done in like uh, World War II. But the thing is, we got... Uh, is, this is going to lead to something because I can't wait until next week to say it because every other podcast is going to be talking about it. So I'm also talking about it now. Then to the show, I know we're running long, close to three hours, but fuck it anyway. But uh, we we kind of talked to, about it. Me and Bank, me Candy went back and forth. Uh, we heard word word that in about four April twentieth, aka four twenty, was going to be the whole thing for uh, Cloverfield three, aka Clover Clover ah. Uh, Cloverfield, the God Particle, but, um, turns out, everybody was wrong, literally, everybody was fucking wrong, uh, we got, we did get a, I think a lot of people were right on the fact that we were going to get a trailer for Cloverfield 3, God Particle, at the Super Bowl, turns out, it wasn't called Cloverfield 3, or, like, how... Cloverfield 2, in essence, was called uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane. Uh, this was called Cloverfield God Particle. And as we said in the Skype call, it was supposed to take place in a space station. Kind of connects, um, at least with the first movie, a little bit. But it was called Cloverfield Paradox, ironically enough. And how we kind of speculated that it was going to be, like, uh, from what I initially heard, it was going to go... Sh- after it had a theatrical run, or run in theaters, it was going to go to Netflix, because uh, the sequels weren't all that much um, profit, in, at least worldwide in the States. It, it had a decent run in the States, but it didn't have a good worldwide take, uh, which meaning that it, they expected where here in the States it might earn 33 million dollars per se, but worldwide it wouldn't hit like five. Uh, but like I said, it turns out uh, instead of it being a worldwide release, at the end of it it went like, hey, this is the whole trailer. Uh, we did release a um, uh, an article in regards to it and the trailer on our Facebook page, which again, which is facebook.com slash the Long Coat Mafia podcast, uh, it, at the end of it, at the end of the trailer, it said, Netflix, catch it on Netflix. Um, turn it up. And I was like, holy shit, uh, what the fuck? Uh, I want to check it out. When is it coming on Netflix? So forth and so on. Turns out, today, uh, I should say not just today, but they released it, in essence, 10 o'clock, uh, if not, uh, in around 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the uh, February the 4th, which was Super Bowl Sunday, they they released it. You know? <laughs> they released it that day without any telling anybody. Like, Tah! Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Groundhog Day, fuck it, you know, Happy Easter. Um, here's something for you, you fuckers. Uh, and I'm like, oh, fuck you, now I gotta watch this when I'm putting together the show, uh, which I did, so, uh, my first impression, uh, let me just give you my first impressions of it, and uh, I'll probably watch it again sometime during the week, and give you probably a more, be- or a much better review on it, and much better take, and, or I'll wait until I contact Big Candy again, and we speak together, and we'll give a better consensus of what we thought of of the film, because I think he ha- still has a uh, Netflix subscription, so, um, that's that, and, but my initial impression was, thank God it came out on Netflix, not because it's bad, but I don't think it would have done well in theaters at all, it does seem a little, doesn't seem like sci-fi channel quality, but it does seem like Netflix quality, so, um, it's pretty decent. It has a lot of drama. It has a little bit of uh, action. It does kind of connect. It's more of a... I don't want to say it's more of a prequel to the first movie than it is the second movie. Uh, uh, it's kind of hard to describe uh, a little bit, or if I do describe it because it's day one, it's giving a whole shit ton of um, uh, spoilers that 
you would just need to see. But if you are a Netflix subscriber, uh, even though I think Bright might be a little bit better than this, but overall, check it out. It's worth the ru- uh, worth the watch, you know, it, I, I want to say my initial impression is it's probably a 6 out of 10, uh, it's not that it's that bad, it's just that at times it seems mediocre, but uh, again, that's just my first impress- impression, and I was kind of watching it half-assed, so let uh, let me give it another chance, see if it actually, the score might actually go up, or down, but uh like I say, check it out. If you're a Netflix, Netflix subscriber, if you like Cloverfield Lane uh, or the Cloverfield series, and or if you just like sci-fi, you might just enjoy this just as well. Uh, I'll give it a shot. You know, you're paying uh, Netflix about ten bucks for uh, your subscription anyway, and you're overall you're not paying too much for the movie, so you at least give it a shot. Give it a check. And that's probably just about it. Uh, if anything more comes out, I'll let you guys know. There will probably be a better review next week. Or there might be a chance I'll get Big Candy on and we'll give another potpourri type episode like this. If you like this type of episode that we just did uh, on Skype and everything else, even though it's running a little bit long, please email the show at longcoatmafia at gmail.com. Uh, if you're listening to us on our website but would rather listen to us on the go, you can do so by downloading the Podbean app and listening to us that way and subscribing to us via the Podbean app or listening to us on Stitcher Radio with the Stitcher app or if you refuse to listen to us on the, our website and you wish to listen to us via Stitcher, you can do so. Uh, but if you like to take us on the go and you don't like to use the Podbean app or the Stitcher app, you can always use the good old reliables like Apple Podcasts and Google Play Music. Or, brand new, or, 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 brand spanking new, we are on Sp- Spotify! That's right, we are on Spotify. Uh, but if you don't like Google Play or using any apps, you like using your desktop computer to listen to things. Like I said, we are on Stitcher.com and Podbean.com. So, uh, you can skip signing into Podbean by just going to our main website, which is thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com. And yes, the word the is part of the website title for us. So, that's that. But if you do sign up for Podbean, it's free. You could uh, bookmark all your favorite episodes and check them out when they come out. Uh, especially when you subscribe to us through the Podbean app and all that. And when you do have Podbean, and if you have Alexa, you can install Podbean on Alexa and play our po- uh, our podcast through Alexa. How about them apples? Um you heard us say that uh, we are on Facebook again. We are we do have social media uh, blah 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 uh, social media sites. Uh, again, our Facebook page is facebook.com slash the Long Coat Mafia Podcast. We're also on YouTube. You just have to search us up or uh, follow the link in the description of this episode. Um, and we're on Instagram. Our handle is Long Coat Mafia. And as well as our uh, Twitter handle is Long Coat Mafia. And what else? I am forgetting something. Yes, our email. If you like anything we say, or if you dis- uh, dislike anything we say, you can join it. Or if you just want to join in the conversation, you can do so by emailing us at longcoatmafia at gmail.com. Or you can leave a message. If you uh, liked our Facebook page, you can leave us a message there. And we will read your message on air. And we will respond. And we'll, especially if we get one for uh, Big Candy. So that's that's that. Uh, what else can we say? Huh? Huh? Uh, not much right now. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that because... What more can I say? We covered the Super Bowl. We covered everything this week. So stay tuned ne- next week because I don't even know what we're posting up next week. And maybe we'll, next week we'll be getting news in regards to our whole press pass situation. So um, stay tuned, folks. There might be an angry rant one of these days in regards to something. So 
Take care. Have a good week. And stay tuned to our social media sites or our Podbean site for more updates. See you next time on the Long Coat Mafia.